drinks and a great time at a low price. We have the coldest beer in our sports bar, where you can enjoy the game on any of our huge flat screen TVs. And when your home team wins, you get 25% off anything in Mambo Grill. We're on Downey Avenue, one block north of Firestone, or visit us on the web. Mambo Grill, love at first bite. This segment has been brought to you by Coco Cafe. It's a cafe latte coconut water with espresso. And I came across this wonderful little drink just recently. And it has to be one of the best things I've ever had. I'm pretty obsessed with cocoa water and espresso. So the thought of it together was a little bit, I'm, I wasn't sure what I was going to get. But my gosh, let me tell you, it's super tasty. It's made with natural coconut water, a strong shot of espresso, and a splash of reduced fat milk. You can visit them online for more information at drinkcococafe.com. Once again, I want to thank everyone at Coco Cafe for being a sponsor of this radio show. Thanks so much. Hi, I'm Aaron Michael Sanchez. And I'm Kelly V. Dolan. And we are excited to announce our show live with Aaron and Kelly is on Rant Radio Network. What do we talk about on our show, Kelly? We talk about everything from entertainment to business and tech, and we have a few laughs in between. <laughs> That's right. Go check us out on rantradionetwork.com. That's rantradionetwork.com. Check it out. Ready for the pain? It feels completely dirty when you're done. Arvin, are you ready for my stop? <laughs> I told you not to eat Indian food, man. How are you blasted it off? <laughs> I'm prematurely. We are the three guys ranch. Arvin, Mike, and Phil. I already feel dirty. Call us at 855-693 guys. And if you didn't understand that, let me try to tune in English, because that was Puerto Rican. You are listening to the three guys rant. Five, five, sixty-nine, three guys. That's six, nine, three, four, eight, six, nine, three. Four. <laughs> mm-hmm. I love me some three guys. <laughs> All right, and we're back. <laughs> so what for- was that? <laughs> For anybody listening, this is the Three Guys Rant with Arvin, Mike, and Phil here in beautiful Los Angeles. I gotta say we're lucky because uh, the rest of the country kind of sucks right now, but it's been. Mid 60s, which I don't know if it's great, but it's better than uh, New York and Canada right now, I gotta assume. So, uh, anybody out there, make sure to check us out at the three guys Call in at 855 69 three guys. Our Twitter handle is the three guys rant. So, again, for anybody that listens to the show, they're wondering what's going on with my voice. A uh, little under the weather. Really, I, don't I thought think you were excited to see Mike because that heavy breathing is starting to stress me out, man. I don't think anybody listening cares about what your voice sounds like. <laughs> They're more worried about how you look. I always look good. That's the problem. Uh, I'm going to sure. go with no. Anyways, you know, the rest of the country is getting pounded by a storm, but I'm not sure if Phil would mind being in uh, anywhere else in the country but here right now. No, hell no. I was reading a little bit ago, you know, Colorado's getting socked in. They are uh, expecting 10 inches of snow tonight. That's socked in? Socked in. I've never heard that one before. You should broaden vocabulary. <laughs> you had trouble with disdain. Anyway. No, no, no that's not a real word. That's not a real word, Phil. Apparently it's not. Yeah. Apparently it's not. But, um, yeah, I would uh, definitely like to uh, be over there. Yeah, so we'd you'd ha- rather be in the snow than here. Oh, absolutely. It's winter, man. He's I don't like, mind. Look, three months a year. It's not winter. It's March. Winter. Isn't it spring almost? See, yeah. the problem is that when you're extra fluffy... And you're super insulated. You look for uh, colder temperatures. If that was the case, you'd be trying to get to the Arctic right <laughs> that, now. That <laughs> is why I'm always so hot. That's the only reason you're hot. <laughs> That's not what the ladies be saying. Um, so. I'm not sure your definition of ladies falls into the same as ours. But that being said. So you want to tell everybody the good news? What's the good news, Arvin? Tell us. Please tell us. Are you on the edge of your seat? Yes. I am on the edge of my seat. Yes. Oh, wait, it says here. Oh, Arvin, <laughs> tell me more. Boy, you guys are a bunch of... Uh, Please. <laughs> so for anybody that's actually following us, woo, um, woo. starting this week, starting on Thursday, we're going to do a second show every week. Lord have uh, mercy. Five to six Pacific Standard Time, same phone number, 855 guys, but through uh, NBC News Radio. Casey, MSNBC News Radio. N- one more time. MSNBC News Radio. KCAA, 1050 AM here in... Uh, out of the IE, baby. So all you meth labs out there, look for us every Thursday. Yeah, I'm sure that's exactly what they want to hear. <laughs> so 
Going on to my second statement. No, uh, no, we're we're, we're going to be broadcasting out of there, but we're we're not going to set foot on the IE. Just so you listeners that are going to be worried, <laughs> we'll be safe in our super secret. St- oh, I'm what, sorry. What so, you got against the 909? Come so, on, gentlemen. What's, so it's not you know. that you're trying to uh, protect the listener; you're trying just to protect saying. yourself. Just saying. Yeah, you know, Mike says he's audio candy. I'm myself for the listeners. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Continue, continue. So again, uh, MSC News Radio KCAA 1050 AM here in Southern California, Thursdays are 5 to 6. So thank you to Paul Amadeus Lane. You gotta just love that name. Uh, and also there is interest from a second um, network. Say it isn't so. It is so. Somebody wants to hear us? Well, I think it's a, Who? a better Who? fit. Who? Boy, you guys are so much sincere. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Trash Talk Network, which is I what? believe here, and that's what I thought on it. Trash Talk, it couldn't no, have been any us. better. Come on, uh, so with, with our level of eloquence, they would, we would be approached by someone known as Trash Talk. Not only approached, but I think they ran. They ran to to uh, try to make this so again. Outstanding. So tra- Trash Talk Network on TV by demand. Uh, I know that they're working out a pretty big uh, syndication deal. I don't have the specifics. So now, when are we going to get approached by Useless Talk? Have nothing to say talk. <laughs> Absolutely boring talk. And dead air radio. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That's Coming good, soon. That's <laughs> a good one. I like what? that one. That's us, baby. Right there, man. All of them. All of the above. So we'll see where it goes. I, I, again, I know that uh, Mike Trash, which is, uh, I believe, the owner over there, is working on some kind of syndication deal and trying to take no, us That's with his him, name, so. Mike Trash. That's his name, Mike Trash. I don't know if it uh, happens to be a coincidence or you legally change it like Amadeus. Just a quick question. Is he white? Absolutely. Okay. He, you know, he looks like who I thought originally it was when I first first saw him. When you first saw him. When I first saw him, mm-hmm. I thought it was Tom Likas. So picture, picture an older white gentleman, kind of like that trashy looking. Where's my glasses? <laughs> <laughs> Just like that. To be minus, Tom Likas or Rush Limbaugh? I guess I, I, I'm about <laughs> as big as Rush Limbaugh, so I got to go that direction. I'm gonna say if they had a kid, that's what you. Outstanding. Do. So, uh, um, all right, let's talk about something else, man. I need to apologize to the listeners. I, I owe our fan base of all four of you an extreme, extreme apology. So there's one more outside of this room. Well, Absolutely. That, that'd be the engineer. No, 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 no. Outside of Octa Allen, who's on the big board, I have to say <laughs> I'm sorry. Gentlemen, what, you know what, why I'm sorry? What, what, because you woke up this morning? Because you tortured them last week by not being here? Absolutely! You should be apologizing to me. Having Give to put up with numb nuts for a new banana. For two hours. Because... I went back and listened to last week's show, folks. Why you didn't firebomb the studio? I just have a question. Me. How did you go back and hear last week's show when as soon as we were done, I went back there and deleted it? Because Octa Allen takes care of Big Daddy. He made sure that there was a copy. Okay. Oh, I think we have a call. Is that right? Mike Trash is on the phone. Uh, so let's, let's uh, see. Mike, are you there? Mike. Are we having technical difficulties? I can hear him, but Mike. I know it's into into uh, his speakers. Mike, are you there? Mike, we can hear you. Let's try it this way. There, there we go. go. How you doing, Mike? Hey, technology. Technology always uh, helps you in the bus. <laughs> Hello. Whoa, whoa, Arvin, Arvin, leave that one alone. Leave that one alone. I said nothing. Okay. <laughs> you said nothing. <laughs> so how you guys doing out there? We're doing great. Nice how you doing, Mike? Warm. Come it's on, Mike. Nice to be in the warm. We're going to be uh, heading towards that snow thing you were talking about a while ago. Ah, spectacular. Build me a snowman, please. Are you, are you located? Yeah. Are you in California? I'm in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Okay, when he said he's heading towards the snow, Arvin, I, I just you know, geographically, I'm you not know, sure you you're seeing the globe. Mike, lately. you're gonna hear a, a, a <laughs> slapping <laughs> sound. <laughs> Mike, you got you got to forgive us. We, we've been trying to educate Arvin in the ways of the world. Um, I, I, I'm not sure Arvin understands that the world isn't flat. Oh, really? That's not what <laughs> that's not what Columbus said. Um, I, I wouldn't know. I. I Stay pretty much uh, within the tri-state area for the most part. Outstanding. All right, Mike. You know what? We we actually had a question. Is your last name actually Trash? Is it really Mike Trash? Well, 
it's actually Marvin trash. No, it's Mike trash. Yes, it <laughs> All right. So why, yeah. why does that sound? Why does that sound really odd to you? I mean, it's just uh, you, you've never heard of anyone with the name trash. Yeah, Arvin. Why is that? Why is that odd? Why are you ridiculing the, the, our new? Why are you ridiculing our new station owner? What's wrong with I'm you, not Arvin? Not at all. I'm just saying the closest thing I've ever heard to that name was Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he's he's my brother, Oscar <laughs> the Grouch, the lived actually, in the trash actually, can. Uh, we got a we got a running character on my show. Uh, his name is Bob, and he looks like. Well, let, let, let me back up a little bit. Uh, I, I was involved in and and involved in professional wrestling, and my uh, mascot is Oscar the Grouch. Outstanding. See, I connected dots when I didn't even know they were there. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you say you were involved in wrestling? Well, I, I am. I, I, uh, I'm not as much. I'm semi-retired. I uh, have had a lot of uh, a few injuries, but uh, you know, I'm de- I'm basically uh, devoting my time towards uh, my music, which I originally started with. You know, I went from music to uh, uh, radio to wrestling to uh, music again. Hey, Mike. This is Phil again. Since you know you you you're still kind of involved in wrestling, what would it take for us if we ship Arvin to you for you to pick him up and body slam him, or what, what am I like? or one of the great moves from the old days where you know you drop him over your knee? Put me. You mean you said ship me? Am I some kind of animal that gets put in a box underneath the plane? Now you're listening. You got it, baby. All you right. got it. Hey, I, I resent the uh, older white man uh, comment. Or <laughs> <laughs> so it's okay that I insulted Arvin. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend your age there, Mike. You know what? I, I'm okay with that. I apologize. I, I, I'm young at heart. I, uh, you know, I, I feel that maybe uh, age is just a, you know, just number. I could not agree more. It's a state of mind. Nothing else. State of mind. Yeah, that's even better. Outstanding. So, you know, uh, Arvin only wrestles in Jello and not, uh, Friday nights at a club out here in L.A. <laughs> Well, I got to tell you that uh, you know you really learn how old you really are once you get in the ring with a guy who's less than half your age or could be your son. You know that's uh, that's when you realize that you're a, a bit old for the for the sport. Well, that's awesome. Tell us a little bit about the uh, Trash Talk Trash Talk Network. All right, Trash Talking Radio Network is uh, basically it it started out as uh, me. Uh, you know, basically, the Trash Talking Radio Show uh, has been around since 2003. It originally was a wrestling show, and then it turned into more of a mainstream media show. So, uh, you know, it's kind of like um, Howard Stern or uh, Bubba the Love Sponge Light. You know, we uh, do news and stuff like you do, and uh, we just basically uh, uh, have a good time on the radio. So that's was the beginning of the Trash Talking Radio Network, as in, you know, we did me, and then I thought about it, and I thought, well, we can take this to another level, and that's why I wanted to find uh, some decent, uh, some, some hand-picking shows. Uh, I, I don't want just anybody out there, uh, and basically, uh, you know, you guys were on the same network uh, that I was for uh, a little while, and, and Basically, I found that uh, you have an interesting show, and uh, I'd like to make you my prototype first show uh, for the network. So what we're doing is we're going to try to fill as many slots as we can and uh, with as as interesting shows as we can. That's one phase of it. That's the uh, Trash Talking Radio Network by TV by Demand. And uh, what we're going to do, you guys, uh, you can use video, so we'll be able to stream your video, too, if you wish. And uh, that's kind of where we're going to start. And then uh, I'm working on another another project that's uh, quite a bit bigger, um, but I can't really talk about that on the air yet. But that that could be something pretty good for me and you. So uh, I hope to to make it. Um, okay. I, I'll know more about it later on this week. All right. So, okay. But until then, we're going to at least be able to do uh, this network uh, okay. and stream your show All with right. ours. Mike, we're, we're getting ready to go on break, but let's uh, absolutely uh, move forward with the project. We appreciate the phone call uh, here at the studio. Well, I wanted to uh, invite one of you guys or uh, all of you guys on the My Show tomorrow night, uh, if that uh, is a possibility. Absolutely. I'd like to, uh, you know, we're, we're on from uh, 7 to 10 Eastern Standard Time, and I'd like to have uh, one or all of you on tomorrow. Perfect. You got it. Okay, we'll, we'll do. Thank you, Mike. 
All right. You got it. Okay. Bye. Take care. Thank you. Yeah, this is Bye. the Three Guys Rant. 855-69-3Guys. We'll be back right after the break. Call the Three Guys Rant now. Would you like to comment? Get on the radio. Check out our website at www.thetreeguysrant.com. The Three Guys Rant. Welcome to the Monster Marketing Group, your one-stop shop for all your marketing needs. Anything you need to make that marketing and advertising campaign stand out, we're your people. Concepts, design, production, social media, anything that you can dream up, we're going to make happen for you. And we can do it in a very quick turnaround. Please give us a call at 888-49-MONSTER. We are the three guys every Monday live from 6 to 7 p.m. You can call us at 855 69 the three guys. <laughs> it's not the three guys. This is why you should turn in because one has Tourette's, the you other really, one's illiterate. You really should listen in. You never know what's going to happen. 855 69 three guys. G U Y S and the number three, not the. Faces yeah. for radio, voices for the deaf. Look forward to talking to you. Hey, I'm audio candy. I don't know about what you guys <laughs> Experts know that for pastry, Baker's Bodega has it all. Exclusive brands like Westco Bankmark, Satin Ice, and Pastry Pride. One-on-one -on -one day seminars for cake decorating and gelatin art. So for our service, wide range of ingredients and supplies, and for the low prices, Baker's Bodega has it all. But you don't need to be an expert. Baker's Bodega, 7869 Paramount Boulevard in Pico Rivera. Come, we're waiting for you. Hi, I'm Aaron Michael Sanchez. And I'm Kelly B. Dolan. And we are excited to announce our show live with Aaron and Kelly is on Rant Radio Network. What do we talk about on our show, Kelly? We talk about everything from entertainment to business and tech, and we have a few laughs in between. <laughs> That's right. Go check us out on RantRadioNetwork.com. That's RantRadioNetwork.com. Check it out. This segment sponsored by Mucho Macho Michelada. Whenever you got to spice up your beer, Mucho Macho Michelada is for you. Did Only you real men. Did you say Mucho Macho? Mucho Macho, baby, where the real men come to drink. Hey, I don't always drink Michelada, but when I do, I drink Mucho Macho Michelada. <laughs> If only Arvid could be a little more mucho macho. Will it put some hair on my chest? <laughs> no, but te quema entrando y saliendo. <laughs> Streaming live from Los Angeles and worldwide, The Three Guys Rant with Arvin, Mike, and Phil. Check out our website at www.thetreeguysrant.com. The Three Guys Rant starts now. All right, we're back from the break. I hope all of you enjoyed listening to our new, what do we call them, affiliate? I guess. Uh, yeah. yeah. I guess our new uh, affiliate station that's going to be broadcasting. Because we're multi-syndication across the nation. You're going to screw that all up. I also want to welcome one of our newest advertisers, Baker's Bodega. If you're here on the uh, West Coast and you need anything involving... I don't even think you have to be on the West Coast. Go to bakersbodega.com. I like the commercial they had on. She called it Bodega. But it's Bodega. So anybody in New York, you know what a Bodega is. This is only better. And uh, you yes, can visit this, them at bakersbodega.com. Because that's not a, a little store that looks like a front for some kind of crack dealing. This is an actual store. I've been in there. They have great stuff. You know, it's funny you say that. But I got to tell you, man, in New York, when I visit, Mikey, the bodegas are? Bodegas is where you go, man, for everything you need. You have one on down near every corner. They from carry all the necessities. From crack to women, absolutely. That's, that's fine. <clears throat> you know, a lot of people just do the, their shopping at bodegas. That's it. They never visit it. Uh, so is that is that the Mexican version of the corner liquor store? Kind of, but they don't all sell liquor. Neither do all liquor stores. Okay. Liquor stores do. <laughs> corner store. But anyway. All right, let's get into it, gentlemen. Let's talk about what everybody is crying about. Let's talk about the sequester. Arvin's face? Well, okay. <laughs> let's talk about the sequester, ladies. What are your thoughts? <laughs> wow, don't all speak at once. The sequester. I don't you, think that's a real word. Can you use that word in a, in a sentence? <laughs> <laughs> the United States is currently under sequester for immediate cuts from the budget. Right. Well, I mean... And I told you, I was annoyed with your president. 
I, I said oh, that. You on know, what so part? Your president? Because I no, remember right now, he's you not were mine. Yeah, my I, president. I voted for him. I, I'm gonna, I'll go on the record and say I voted for him. But I'm telling you, in the last 10 days, I've never seen a dumber group of monkeys in my life. Oh, you mean the Republicans? No, sir. I'm talking about all the doom and gloom the Democrats keep crying about. You know, this so is would, a you, mere would you pittance. take your vote back? I mean, is that how bothered you are? Yes. Really? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. That is, that's some strong this, words This has right got to be, at least in my opinion, some of the stupidest shenanigans I've seen these morons do. And these morons, they've done some pretty stupid things. But this whole BS about making the country panic about what could or could not happen for a pitiful $100 billion, our budget is $3.2 trillion. And the sad part is that, you know, that doorknob Trump. You know what I like is that you're just throwing these numbers around like they're just chump change. When you're talking about a $3.2 trillion budget, it is chump change. We just gave what? $60 billion? Look at the screen you said. There you go. So there's a question we're called. 85 billion from the federal budget and that cost taxpayers 3.6 trillion from an American economy valued at 16 trillion dollars. Correct. Okay. So the numbers are pitiful. The 100 billion will make a dent over 10 years, but you know, you've got the president going on there talking about, "Oh, long lines at airport because they're so short now." And we're going to have all these people unemployed because everybody's working now. I don't know. Yeah, they, they weren't saying that it was going to happen the, the day of the sequester, they said that some of the the uh, effects are going to take a while t- to actually manifest. So. Right, but normally, especially you, you <coughs> love insulting the Republicans because they like preaching brimstone and fire. Uh, they like getting correction. the people. He likes attacking just about anybody. Granted, but Mikey's one of Mikey's biggest pet peeves has always been the you know crying wolf, false alarms, and I'm just kind of surprised because this time around. You know, he hasn't well, had much to say. Uh, on it's not subject. that. It's it's because nobody really knows how the sequester is going to affect anything. I mean, it's all speculation at this point. Even the Democrats or the Republicans, nobody really knows. So what the president is saying is what they think may happen, just like the Republicans are saying what they think is going to happen. Nobody. This will be the first time that this happens in our history. So nobody really knows how it's going to affect anything. So both sides are posturing hey, right now, trying to figure to, out. According you know, to Big what's Daddy happen. Warren Buffett. He says nothing's going to happen. All right. But he's, he doesn't know for a fact. We'll, we'll see. Well, I'm going to say Hopefully that the third richest man in the world, I'm going to give him a little bit more credibility than... Um, he's not third he, anymore. Sorry, he's fourth. I'm sorry. For, uh, that's right. As of today, the fourth richest man in the world, I'm going to give him a little bit more credibility. Who took his spot? A Spaniard. can't remember his name. It was a Spanish gentleman. That's good. That's good. Arvin, okay. So, you know, he took on Arvin. <laughs> I'm over here. And your thoughts? Uh, power to the people? But the, pro- the problem was the sequester was something that nobody wants to talk about it. The sequester was a Republican idea, okay? So what this is going on, wh- whatever the president Are you keeps sure saying, it's their idea? Because all the media uh, outlets keep saying that it was, it was the uh, Democrats' idea. Oh, uh, really? Basically, the, 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 uh, the Republicans decided to use the debt ceiling as hostage, and the ransom that they got for doing that was the sequester. They, they were trying to force the president's hand into cutting social programs. So when the debt ceiling idea happened, you know, about a year ago, or whatever, that they didn't want to erase it, uh, that's when this, all this came about. And what's funny is that the, the, the debt ceiling is something that's never not been raised. Whenever it, it's just, it happens every year after year for every president. This time around, since the black guy is in office, the Republicans decided, no, he's not going to get it. So they made a big deal out of this, and that's why we're in the situation, the sequester and all these other stupid cuts. But okay, you're Nobody wants to talk about that. They all want to talk about, oh, well, the president said this, the president said that. Why are we in this mess to begin with? Because the Republicans forced this upon us. And then Speaker Boehner goes out the other day, and he says, well, I had nothing to do with the sequester. I, that wasn't my idea. Well, jackass, you voted for it, so you have <laughs> something to do with it. You know? Okay, but but let's talk about let's talk about the meat of it. Okay, fine. So we're here. My question is, why is it so bad? W- at, at what point... Are we finally going to say enough is enough? Because you and I have fought year after year about the <laughs> debt ceiling. And I know you said it's because Obama was black. And I don't care who's president. I'm saying, when is enough enough? Okay, but why wasn't this a big deal when it was Bush? It was a big deal. No, it wasn't. It sure was passed it was. Every, every single time. Uh, but it, was, but it, it, it wasn't. It, 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 I don't think there was ever, ever a debate on the floor of either chamber on it. It was just done automatically. Okay, but the Republicans aren't in the business of giving away money. 
the Democrats are. N- no, the Republicans are in the business giving away money to corporations and the rich. The Democrats give it, to try to give it to the now poor. You say it like it's a bad thing. No, exactly. So they they have no problems to quote what their idol. Uh, deficits don't matter, you know, because uh, that's what are you, you guys are, learned are you, from are you from Reagan. Up Ronnie Reagan. Yeah, you know, but now because you know this this is theory that was um, it's actually written about. I think it was in the seventies. The the two Santas theory wow, and basically what it was. That's a pretty modern theory then. No, but but it's it's practiced <laughs> today. It's, it's it's practiced today by the Republican Republican Party. Basically, so when they you? when they are in power, they spend 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 like it's going out of stock, giving money to everybody. Then when they <coughs> lose, then they complain about the budget and and the deficit. So it's one of those things. Okay, that but then doesn't that say? And again, you and I have had this argument off the air a hundred thousand times. Doesn't that say though that then why didn't the Democrats raise holy hell when they had the chance? Why is it that every time we can sit here now and Monday when morning, was morning that? quarterback? You're saying that when the Republicans are in office or in charge, they spend, spend, spend. Right. Then when they're not in charge, they complain. Right. Well, why didn't the Dems complain about their spending? How come we never hear from them? Why is it always so lackadaisical, the approach, unless the Dems are in office? And even now that they're in office, we barely hear from them. We hear from them all the time. The Republicans the problem, are much louder. The, yeah, they are much louder. They're uh, much more w- well organized. The problem that we have is our, se- our messed up system, particularly in the Senate, where you have basically the, the minority party determines which direction the, the country goes to. W- in which direction the country goes and that was right now I blame Harry Reid for not having the balls to change that because at the beginning and every uh, every session of Congress they can change the rules and one of the things he has said he was going to change was the filibuster rules and he was going to make it a simple majority 51 votes you can pass a law you can pass legislation but he decided to use the Obama approach and sit with Mitch McConnell and negotiate because the Republicans said they would be in their good best behavior and let things happen and let the country move on of course the republicans reneged they, they didn't do what they agreed they were going to do and that's what we're in this mess harry reed should have just said you know what screw you guys the rules will change with harry and, and harry reed is a <coughs> democrat okay so that he tried to work with them again so what you're what saying you is we it. shouldn't work with them i'm saying that the democrats need to grow set up balls absolutely and quit being such patsies Abs- Ab- and this I'm is what I've you. been arguing with you for years. Amen. Okay, I agree with you. So on that. I'm just saying that w- we're, we're pissed off about something <laughs> that's so pitiful. The sequester amount of dollars we gave Sandy Hook. Alan, you got the graphic. How much did we give Sandy Hook, Arvin? Sandy the hurricane. <laughs> yeah, the hurricane. <laughs> uh, Thirteen point six billion dollars. <laughs> is that is that a real number? <laughs> it is. What do you think? I don't know this stuff. So my one question is: Are you guys going to be typical Americans that just want to complain, complain, complain what the black guy is or is not doing? I'm not or, blaming. Or the, I'm not blaming the black guy. I don't care that he's black. What is your recommendation then to fix it? Because all I'm hearing is complaining. I say cut it. more. Because I I don't, I don't agree with Mike about social programs. And we've had this conversation <laughs> over and over. For me, I say cut more. I don't care. Cut more of what? More, I'm saying the, the 85 billion that wasn't hard enough. I say you want to go after it. You want to you, you want to fix something. You need people to become engaged. You need those idiots that we elect running this country to do more. It should have been 500 billion, something that matters, something that matters, not a hundred billion dollars. So you're upset because it's not enough. I'm upset that the country. Okay, but where and, where do you want those cuts to come from? Where, wherever they need to come from. No, no country in the history of the world has ever gone into prosperity prosperity by simply making cuts there's got to be revenue increases okay, and that's so what the, so the, so the, the republicans right. keep fighting they don't want to close any loopholes they don't want to raise taxes they want to just cut 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 and that's never worked it's not gonna freaking work so who's doing it right right now nobody okay, nobody so the whole government is no screwed example. up there's no example i'm not talking about just in the u.s i'm talking about in the in the whole world is anybody doing it right let me see or who's doing it right better? Better, way better than us, Germany. Germany didn't go through the struggles that most countries went when this mess happened here and we dragged Do the they have welfare? Th- Do they have people on uh, yes. unemployment yes. and people that have been on it for 30 years? Yes, and they have socialized medicine too. So then there's got to be But their, their economy is one of their economies that recover quickly and it continues to grow. They yes, but they're, also, but they're also one of the countries that, and we've talked about this before, where they almost make unions look soft here because it's almost impossible to get fired in Germany. 
Okay, but so whatever, like whatever, whatever's happening, it's working for their economy. So whether you agree with it or not, it's working. Okay, but the only problem with that, okay, we're not Germany. So what oh, I'm right. saying no, is, just me. I know, oh, I know. Oh, Arvin asked oh, the oh, question. According so, to your birth certificate, I'm gonna go out and say, "Hey, now, <laughs> you're, you're part of the master race." Okay, be that as it may, where, where, where I'm attacking sorry. Arvin I'm is, sorry, Hitler, what? Okay, again, what I'm saying is, you can say whatever you want, but how is it affecting here? I don't care what Germany's doing. I'm gonna say, I don't know if Hitler had it all wrong. I do think that there needs to be a lot of a lot of removal of a lot of things and a lot of people. All right, so the SS officer to my right will probably still be here after the break. You listen to the Three Maybe. Guys Rant on the Rat Radio Network. We'll be right back after the break. Stick around. Transmitiendo en vivo en Los Angeles y alrededor del mundo. Would you like to comment? Get on the radio. Check out our website at www.thetreeguysrant.com. The Three Guys Rant. segment sponsored by Mucho Macho Michelada. Whatever you got to spice up your beer, Mucho Macho Michelada is for you. Did Only you, real men. Did you say Mucho Macho? Mucho Macho, baby, where the real men come to drink. Hey, I don't always drink Michelada, but when I do, I drink Mucho Macho Michelada. <laughs> If only Arvin could be a little more mucho macho. Will it put some hair on my chest? <laughs> no, but te quema entrando y saliendo. <laughs> Welcome to the Monster Marketing Group, your one-stop shop for all your marketing needs. Anything you need to make that marketing and advertising campaign stand out, we're your people. Concepts, design, production, social media, anything that you can dream up, we're going to make happen for you. And we can do it in a very quick turnaround. Please give us a call at 888-49-MONSTER. Hi, I'm Aaron Michael Sanchez. And I'm Kelly V. Dolan. And we are excited to announce our show live with Aaron and Kelly is on Rant Radio Network. What do we talk about on our show, Kelly? We talk about everything from entertainment to business and tech, and we have a few laughs in between. That's <laughs> right. Go check us out on rantradionetwork.com. That's rantradionetwork.com. Check it out. This segment has been brought to you by Coco Cafe. It's a cafe latte coconut water with espresso. And I came across this wonderful little drink just recently, and it has to be one of the best things I've ever had. I'm pretty obsessed with cocoa water and espresso, so the thought of it together was a little bit, I'm no, I wasn't sure what I was going to get, but my gosh, let me tell you, it's super tasty. It's made with natural coconut water, a strong shot of espresso, and a splash of reduced fat milk. You can visit them online for more information at drinkcococafe.com. Once again, I want to thank everyone at Coco Cafe for being a sponsor of this radio show. Thanks so much. Streaming live from Los Angeles and worldwide, the Three Guys Rant with Arvin, Mike, and Phil. Check out our website at www.thetreeguysrant.com. The Three Guys Rant starts now. All right, we're back from the break. Um, 855-69-3 guys is the number to call if you want to join in on the conversation, if you have something to say, and uh, let's see where it goes. Mikey, females in the NFL. <coughs> I think they make great cheerleaders. <laughs> what do you think about this weekend? Which part? Well, you know, I mean, the the young lady who tried out for the NFL. She wanted to be a place kicker, correct? Yeah. Did she make it? What? No, no, no. After two kicks, um, she – I'm not sure if she hurt herself or um, – she wasn't able to continue. No, I'm not. I'm going to say I don't think women have any business in the NFL. There's certain things. I mean, the, seriously, as a society, uh, this crap about being politically correct and everybody having the same opportunities is a load of crap. All right? And there's certain places where women shouldn't be. There's certain places where kids would, shouldn't be. There's certain places where handicapped people shouldn't be. And, and that's that's mm -hmm. that. To hell. Uh, and I, you know what? I know we're going to get in trouble. I, I agree with you. You know, there's going to be people that, it, let's say she made it by chance and she's she's punts and somebody, you know, the, the defense comes out <clears throat> and nails her and breaks her spine or her neck. They're going to say that they're too rough on her because she's a woman. So now we're going to have 
to have different rules for women. You know, it's funny. I was thinking yesterday, what are we going to have to do? Different colored helmets? Right. So they know when they see a pink helmet, don't tackle her that hard. You know, so then the rule's going to be, okay, well, no, now you got to just touch her on the shoulders. Right. So we're, it's not talking about a normal women. We're talking about women. In the actual NFL. In the NFL. Right. Yeah. Go ahead. I, I'm waiting for your that, – this, this is where you thrive, Mr. Ochoa. Hit it. <laughs> With what? Stupidity, you're going to say? Hey, I was just giving you an opportunity. Do what you do best. No, no, no. I, I, I completely disagree that women should be in the NFL. I know we've had some guests in the past that play football professionally, but it's in an all-women league. Right. I, I, think I, that's I, can't, okay. I can't picture that girl. I don't know if that's one of the football players, but she looks at a buck 20 at best. <clears throat> Yeah, she, I, she I, tried I, out. Yeah. She, she I, I was going to be yeah. a, a place. A, a she kicker. is going to be demolished, being tackled by a four hundred pound anybody coming at her. Right. So yeah, I mean, I don't get it how they even consider it, being that they're trying to um, change the rules, change some of the equipment, change helmets, change change pads. I mean, now you're going to have to do pads just for boobs. Unless I mean, those would be the pads, but that's a different story altogether. So yeah, I just I don't see it. What do you see? Barefoot and in the kitchen is what I see, but <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Right now, they're really making. I mean, take take the uh, WNBA. I don't think that's been successful in any shape, way, or form. I just I've never seen the stadiums full. I don't know a single person that's ever said they've gone to a game. I know right now the biggest push right now that they're doing is women's MMA. And even, I mean, that's probably going to be one of the best ones. But I have no interest in seeing two women go at it. And I know Alan has some pictures. I don't know if you'll post them up. Um, they went and they did, I think, the hottest women in, in MMA out of most most of them. I'd say maybe a handful of them. Her. She's probably the hottest one. I'd go a couple rounds with her. Absolutely. But most of them don't look like her. They look like they've been... See yeah, that I just I just don't okay, think that's But there's a big difference though I, Where I disagree with you There is an enormous difference between Women fighting women And women fighting men so Oh absolutely I, but what I'm saying is I still have no interest in seeing, seeing either one But how did we go from a conversation of Should women be in the NFL Or playing men's sports with I won't sleep with that one but I'll sleep with that one I'm just saying <laughs> I, I still think MMA is a men's sport Again For we, the most part You do realize that it's not Women fighting men You know what That I would see that okay. I, I would but see But if they have Their own category I'm not opposed to that I would see I would be more interested In seeing a woman well, Fight it, a man isn't there, In isn't MMA Isn't a Women's football league Right That's, now Well oh, but did you just lingerie? Did you just tune in Right now No I know But that Is it strictly The lingerie league No I, There's a women's football league We had one on our show A couple months back From Dallas Remember it was the first Actually they were playing In an NFL stadium She called in I want to see Dallas Diamonds that was straight up uh, okay. professional football, pads okay. and everything. No, yeah, I, I think I remember that call. I think I remember you know seeing it, pictures it, it, of that. I'm lady. glad both of you guys just woke up. Uh, but it's one of those things. Uh, yeah, they, they have a league of their own, if you will, to quote the title of a movie. And I think that's the only way that the professional sports, if women are going to get into professional sports, got to be women and women, period. Uh, I still have no interest in seeing it. Again, a woman fighting a man in an MMA ring, I would, I would pay to see that. But then why is it okay? But that's retarded. You know that, right? <laughs> I know that. And that's why it's entertaining. If you're going to make it entertaining, make it entertaining. Or two women against one man. But isn't it entertaining? It's in the... the, the uh, isn't two women fighting one man uh, mud wrestling over here in, in Hollywood? Uh, I plead the fifth on that one. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, the challenge is if you see two men fighting, MMA style or boxing, however, it's, it's you know, look at their skills, their training, what they, what they can do to each other. A man and a woman, you know, if they're both well trained, the man's gonna have okay, the advantage. Okay, but, but let me ask you this: what is what is one of the biggest sports on the planet? Soccer. Soccer. After that, we're probably gonna go through a couple of them. So let's just get to it. WWE, which used to be known as WWF, that's that, the biggest sport on the planet. Would you just shut your trap so I can finish my statement? But you started off with what is the biggest? Sport it is a sport. Video. You have to have some kind of conditioning or or, or it's not training. A sport. That's a bunch of over steroids monkeys throwing each other it around. It doesn't matter. I'm not saying it's not entertaining. It doesn't matter. But, but it's but not that's, a sport. That's my point. We're it's going back to entertaining. Okay, but and it's got it's one of the biggest cash. <laughs> 
float here sports in the out United there. States. I'm not sure it's in you the go, planet. You go to Germany, you go anywhere in the world, they know exactly who's who. Hey, bro, Lucha Libre has been going on in Mexico okay. eons longer okay. than the doorknobs that are already here. What is it? Is it McMahon? I can't remember the gentleman's name. Yes, but McMahon. Uh, he turned it more than he turned it into a business. Now it's a worldwide sport. And is it a sport? Eh, it's on the fence. And he became a billionaire in the process. That's my point. It's all about entertainment. So if you want to take out, you want to, you want to get a sport to the next level, make how, it entertaining. How, how is women in sports? McMahon, a bunch of men in underwear, they're, 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 they're under ruse, throwing each other around, screaming, grunting. I mean, really? Yeah. <laughs> you, do, you not, do you not see the dots? <laughs> Have you not seen Nacho Libre? <laughs> <laughs> I'm wearing um, my stretchy pants today, man. Take it easy. <laughs> I um. But no, women should not be in the NFL. If they want to play football, they should go be in the women's NFL. If they want to be in an NFL stadium, they should be watching the game and or be a what, cheerle- it, cheerleader. You know what? The funny thing is, is that the uh, young lady that we actually had on our show and the rest of the team, nobody, none of the pictures I saw looked like that girl. They were built like men. So I think even she would get rocked going up in the uh, women's NFL. No, they were built like men, but they were mu- muscular. Oh, they were absolutely muscular. I mean, they were in shape. Well, as a matter of fact, if I'm not mistaken, the girl that had called in said she was about 5'5", five five, but I think she had even gone head-to-head with some professional players. And she had been doing it for years. So what is the history of the girl? Did she just wake up one day and say, I want to play football? Yeah, she wanted to try out. Just from one day to the next. Well, I, I, I don't know what her, her full history is. Um, I say have her sign the... Uh, the contract, the I will not sue when I'm paralyzed. No, you're missing and the point. send her though. out there. No, because again, once you do that, okay, again, now we've changed the rules again. You know, we've made it difficult. We're saying that they have to be careful with her. It's wrong. It's wrong. Now, well, it's, a- any, you know, anybody out there, anybody who plays sports or anybody that's competitive knows that is the biggest crock of BS out there. You know, for a fact, is that her female? Yeah. yeah. I, she would get destroyed. I, I would almost pay to see that. But you know that anybody... What is it that you would pay to see <laughs> a woman man get destroyed, destroyed by 300-pound animals running women. at them? Because you know for a fact, everybody that plays sports is competitive. It's just part of the, part the, part of the game. So you know that everybody's going to go out of their way just to clip this girl. No, they're not. Because they're going to be known as the a-hole I right, would. who hurt that I poor girl in the field. Would. I'd go out of my way just to rock her. So that nobody ever would be stupid enough to have that request again. All right. And then when they shot you, you know what? I'm okay with that too. Wow. You know, it, it's not it's not a sport, but it's along the same lines as women in combat. You know, it's it's obviously before, I can't speak to that. But before can. Phil comes to tell me that how did the NFL go into? But it, you know, it's one of those things. Women in combat. You know, the, the Leon Panetta just lifted the ban, so some women are going to be able to. Uh, try to get into some of the combat arms uh, MOS's or occupational fields in the military and I don't know how I feel about that man it's just it's just there's certain thing women are not meant to do and I think being in combat uh, in, a, in a male dominated unit uh, is not a very good idea okay so let me ask you this real quickly kind of on topic there's a show Joe's versus pros what do you agree do you agree with that do you disagree with that a professional athlete going up against just a regular guy that thinks he missed being professional by whatever reason. Thank you, Alan. Nobody can hear him, just so you know. Joe's versus pro. Really? So, a reality show, no, another no, saying, piece of I'm crap saying, on saying television. Theory. I'm saying in theory. The reason I bring this up is because there's been controversy around Mayweather for years that he didn't want to fight Pac- Pacquiao. Well, recently, anybody that knows is that he's really good friends with 50 Cent. Somebody's put up because I guess they had some kind of um, partying. A uh, billionaire put up five million to go to each if they would actually fight, get in the ring, and go toe to toe professionally. Who? Uh, let me see here. No, not who put up the money. Who goes toe to toe? Them two. Fifty Cent and, and Mayweather. Mayweather. Yeah, the uh, billionaire entrepreneur Alki David, uh, celebrity boxing promoter Damian Feldman are breaking off, and you know, go on again. Five million to each. 50 cents all for it. He's like, I'm in. I'm all about the dollar. They haven't been able to get Mayweather to either say yes or no. <clears throat> would it be entertaining? Yes. Would I pay to see it? Absolutely not. But if it's free, I would tune in. Okay. 
<laughs> All right. <laughs> so, uh, how we yeah, went this from, is how we, from this is how we stay on topic. I love how, it. How we went it's from sports. winning combat it's to sports. to that. Uh, you don't think that'd be entertaining? Yes. Alan? Yes. Anything? <laughs> <laughs> Did that go out? Did that go out? No, that was internal. Oh, okay, okay, good. We can share that with the world. <laughs> Well, here's, here's the pictures. So we're back on topic. Here's some, some women. Uh, See, they're obviously uh, laughing because they, they just heard the story of Mayweather and uh, 50. You know, I, I wish that billionaire would call it right now and offer a million dollars for Arvin to go up against Mayweather and just pound him senseless. You know what? For a million bucks, I would do that. It's just, it, I don't know how I feel about women in the military joining the uh, the infantry. It's, it, it's just, to me, it would be more of a distraction. That's because you're a horny pervert. You listen to the three guys rant on the Rat Radio Network. Stick around, we'll be right back. Transmitiendo en vivo en Los Angeles y alrededor del mundo. Would you like to comment? Get on the radio. Check out our website at www.thetreeguysrant.com. The Three Guys Rant. We are the three guys every Monday live from 6 to 7 p.m. You can call us at 855-69-THE-THREE-GUYS. <laughs> it's not the three guys. This is why you should turn in because one has Tourette's. The you other really, one's illiterate. You really should listen and you never know what's going to happen. 855-69-THREE-GUYS. G-U-Y-S and the number three, not the. Faces yeah. for radio, voices for the deaf. Look forward to talking to you. Hey, I'm audio candy. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> Welcome to the Monster Marketing Group, your one-stop shop for all your marketing needs. Anything you need to make that marketing and advertising campaign stand out, we're your people. Concepts, design, production, social media, anything that you can dream up, we're going to make happen for you. And we can do it in a very quick turnaround. Please give us a call at 888-49-MONSTER. Hi, I'm Aaron Michael Sanchez. And I'm Kelly V. Dolan. And we are excited to announce our show live with Aaron and Kelly is on Rant Radio Network. What do we talk about on our show, Kelly? We talk about everything from entertainment to business and tech, and we have a few laughs in between. <laughs> That's right. Go check us out on RantRadioNetwork.com. That's RantRadioNetwork.com. Check it out. Streaming live from Los Angeles and worldwide, The Three Guys Rant with Arvin, Mike, and Phil. Hot topics and headlines. Hello, doctors. Politics. The Three Guys Rant starts now. The Three Guys Rant. All right, we're back from the break. Unfortunately, Arvin is still with us. And um, <coughs> But you know what? I couldn't resist. Before we uh, end the first hour, you know, as we're prepping for the show, everybody tries to take it a little bit serious. And Arvin comes up with some winners. So I just wanted to read to you guys this one because this is a good Mikey, this is going to be a good <coughs> debate. $2 movie theater is packed. Exclamation point. Sign of the times? Question mark. Are we bouncing back from the recession? <laughs> we Arvin? must be because people are going to watch the $2 movie. $2 movie. Arvin? <coughs> if that movie theater is a sign of the times, I don't know what the hell America's complaining about because everybody that's in there is using their welfare check. That place was jam-packed. Um, the last time I went to a movie theater was probably one of those ritzy ones where you get your own Lazy Boy seed, you get a waiter, you get all that stuff. It's about, I don't know, somewhere between 20 to 30 bucks per movie per person. Well, at two bucks, people are showing up by the boatload. Got about 30 Mexicans getting out of a car, and they didn't leave the kids at home. It's not, it's not date night. It's let's take the kids out and spend eight bucks, and 15 of us can see a movie. Okay, if the movie is two dollars, <laughs> how can fifteen people? I didn't even want to do the math. See a movie for eight bucks. Can you explain that math? There, because they were still stuffing them in bags. Wow. So yeah, you couldn't beat it. Two dollars a movie, one dollar hot dogs. They're they're probably left over from A and PM that didn't sell. Uh, I think drinks were a dollar, but holy crap, was it full? Well, what does that tell you? People are 
looking for bargains. They're looking for the $2 no, movie. No, no, Mikey. No, no. No, the, re- the economy's recovering, Mikey. $2 movies. That's the ticket. Now, how many of those people did, did you see show up in the new Lam- Lamborghini the Veneno? You know, the Veneno? That's the that's Veneno. It's the veneno. The yes. Veneno. Wow. It's a $4 million car. Now, that would be a sign of the, the, that the economy All, I, all I got to say is that there was a lot of Mercedes and uh, other expensive cars in the parking lot. So, I'm still going back with people are just too lazy to get off uh, their couch and go to work. Well, just because you're well off does not hold mean on. that you wouldn't. Hold on, hold on. I, I know we're talking about the veneno. I, I'm sorry, though, but I need Arvin to elaborate for once in his life. I'm still curious how a 100-seat theater of $2 moviegoers is an improvement in the economy. I, I'm just, I'd still like to go back to Maybe that. it's because it's I had gone there before and there was nobody in that movie theater. Yeah, when you go Wednesday at 2 o'clock, Pee Wee Herman, most well, if people you, if are at work. Wait, but wait, if you go Saturday, when it's wait, 80 degrees and you're wearing a, a black trench coat. <laughs> <laughs> so when yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's going in for a completely different reason. To, go, to go watch Little Mermaid. Yeah, Wednesday at 2 o'clock, you know, when most people are at work. Now, now, now keep in mind, if you go Tuesday all day. It's one dollar. Okay, hold on. Here's the funny part, though, about Arvin insulting everybody around him. Ask Arvin how many people he took, Mikey. Uh, including myself. Yes. Um, it was a date night. And there were children involved. <laughs> well, there was lots of children there. How many children did you take? Uh, besides myself, you were what a, a party of five? I don't even know five people. So let me get this straight. Your your version of a date night. With no children Was a two dollar movie Because you gotta get in As cheap as possible Absolutely Two dollars As a matter of fact I didn't even pay for the movie She She did That's how good I am Oh For crying out loud But I did buy her A 99 cent cheeseburger At Wendy's Okay Once again Help me understand though (laughs) Thank you sir where is I'm just curious because again you that was on your list it's poignant right there. Mikey do you see that do you see that right there yeah that was there yeah, that was right there let me so let me get my list Where's are my list? we bouncing back from the recession that was a hard hitting question well you know what do you want to continue on that or no please please you, uh, on that specific sure, one or within sure, the topic no no go ahead within go ahead. the topic yeah, or? yeah go ahead go ahead what let's keep talking money keep money talking money, money. money. Let's do it. Uh, I know previously over the weekend we had a discussion in regards to uh, apparently we're too stupid to learn from ourselves. Because I know we had talked about uh, mortgages and what is uh, being presented in regards to helping move more property. Okay. Now, if I'm not mistaken, you said there's a possibility that we're going to go state and income again. No, 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 no. Possibility. I did say that. I said that some people in the business that I happen to know called very excited that they're hearing things. I don't. I don't want to stipulate possibility. None of that. I shared with you. But it's some, being discussed. I don't know that because the people that called me are some of the dumbasses that were involved in the. You know that got burned last time. So that tells me it's going to happen. Well, I don't know that to be a fact. But okay. okay, but I, I'm saying the percentage of it happening is higher than it not happening. So it hasn't even. What's it been? Eighteen months, if that, roughly. What's your point? We're getting ready to do it all over again. We don't know that. I'm but, it, but if we are, if we are getting ready to do it all over again, it is, a, it is the nature of the beast. It is a sign yeah, of the it's time. Ju- it's usually a cycle, like every 10-year cycle, not every two years. The problem is, though, people don't have that kind of patience anymore, and there are no jobs. So if they can't stimulate the economy somehow, it's bound to be, you know. So, again, we shut off one foot. Let's shoot off the other one and be kunti kinte. Well, you know what's funny is, well, you're pushing it today, Hitler and Kunta. Okay. Um, for anybody who, I don't did you get a chance to see 60 Minutes last night? No. There was a spectacular report on China yesterday. I, I, don't, I don't get that show. It takes like 90 minutes to watch. It does. It does. <laughs> it really does. But, what, you know, they were showing how in China, a couple of years ago, they changed the laws where people could buy their homes. You know, they didn't have okay. to get from the government. And they started building these cities. No joke. There, they went to this one city, and, and, and that one, not just one, there was tons of them. Approximately five square miles. Absolutely beautiful homes, parks, condos, apartments, shopping centers, mixed-use centers, the whole nine yards. State-of-the-art. They're less than two years old. Not one person lives in them. Is it built in one of, one of those areas that's hit by the... Uh... You would think so. No. It is not. No, but I'm talking about the uh, the pollution. No, not so much. No, no. These were built in some of the most pristine areas in China. And no, because nobody can afford it. No, 
they're they're all sold they're all fully owned what happened was they built them because the chinese which i found extremely extremely bizarre but wanted to follow our lead okay and they're buying up properties they were buying up two, three, four, five units. And now the government is restricting them to one unit. So what they have to do is go to different provinces and different towns to buy more than one unit. Nobody's living in them because, don't you know, Mikey, real estate automatically appreciates. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, so just imagine, retarded. just imagine five square miles of brand new development, parks, everything. <clears throat> you know what that tells me? What does that tell you? That tells me that's where I'm going to be doing my Christmas shopping because nobody's home. What part of nobody <laughs> lives there? They're abandoned. They're empty. Uh, light fixtures? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, and this was your topic. Your I topic. Was wrong with you. I didn't I wasn't talking about the Chinese. <sighs> Since we're talking about money um, and the economy, according to Arvin, I will say that one of the things that I've seen um, in recent months is, to your point, you know, several restaurants that um, we go to on occasion, and I don't care what Mike says, he joins us to these restaurants where, you know, they don't have 99 cent items. I am forced to go to this restaurant. (laughs) I am forced to eat this good food. Because he lives high on the hog with his wine, cheese, and crusty crackers. That's right. Well, you know, what's funny about that statement where we went to an extremely, extremely nice establishment a few weeks ago in honor of uh, uh, baby Hitler's birthday over here. <laughs> and, it, it, you know, the next morning I get a phone call and I, and I was talking to Mike. I said, you know, how was everything? Oh, my wife um, was uh, up chucking all night long. And I told him, you know, bro, that's what happens when you feed your wife that crap from the dollar store every day. Then you take her to a good meal. No, 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 because to, to him... It's convenient to pull into a gas station, buy his hot dog and his hamburger all in one shot for 30 bucks. And a beef jerky. That's right. So he is Slim like the Jim, number baby. one client for AMPM. What freaking gas station do you go to or a hot a- dog, a Slim Jim, and a... AMPM. For 30 bucks? Are you including gas? Because you did say oh, you no, no, gas. that includes gas. Yes, oh, okay, yes, yes, you didn't say that. Right. You said he pulled into a gas station, bought a hamburger, a hot dog, and a Slim Jim for 30 bucks. No, no, that included a tank full of gas. Well, not in, not in today. A tank? What's he driving? A motorcycle? <laughs> a little scooter. Hola, Max. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, go ahead. What? <laughs> ¿Qué pasó, papá? <laughs> wow. <sighs> All right. All of a sudden, I'm hearing, I'm hearing no, more you know coming what? out of my left ear. We're, we're talking money. It's a little bit of to- not not off topic, but you know who, who can who can uh, definitely see, spend some money. See now now that uh, the family's listening, he's moving on. Oh, yeah. No, uh, I'm about to get slapped. Joe Flacco. Oh, did you see that contract he got, man? But what I don't like is I'm worth it because I'm worth it. <laughs> no, you're not. Nobody's 20, worth that kind of money. He's going to get $29 million as a signing bonus. $52 million is guaranteed. And he's going to be paid $51 million over the first two years of the deal. And he says after he signed, it's not about the money. It's about the respect. The, uh, so the, the contract is worth $120 million. If it's about the respect, why doesn't he return 100 of it? I don't know, but I mean, wow, what a contract, man! That's gonna be—is that the highest to any one player? Because that's over two years, right? No, hold on, I'll tell you right now, six years, brother. But but fifty-two for the first two. Yes. In addition to the signing and everything else, so that's yes. one hundred and twenty is literally over the first two years. <clears throat> no, that would be uh, eighty-one million dollars over the first two years. That still has to be ridiculous. That's got to be—is there anybody higher than him in any sport? Yeah. It's a Cowboys player, isn't it? No. Who? Formula One racer. Eh. Don't see that. Makes $121 million a year. $121 million a year? Yeah. The, pro- the thing is, again, where if you had brought in your, your horizons and read more, you'd know that a lot of the players that we talk about. I'm, so- I'm sorry, Redneck. You should be watching NASCAR, not uh, Formula One. Uh, once again, uh, the guys in, in NASCAR are lucky to break a million. Okay. Dude, how, how is it that that sport can generate that kind of monies? Because it's the same kind of principle as soccer. It has a stronger following around the world. Where, you know, we, we only see what we see here, so we assume it's the biggest, but we're not even close. Formula One racing around the world is more international. Hmm. You know, so that's why those kind of numbers, the kind of sponsorships they have, 
Because yeah, um, I knew that I knew that the highest paid athlete in the world was a Formula One. <coughs> Michael driver. Schumacher. Wow, that's one big nut. <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> woo! Um, I don't even know where to go. <laughs> what the hell is wrong with you? Uh, Alan, if you could find something to just shoot at him, I'd I do. <clears throat> uh, oh, man, we're going on break. Actually, we're not. We'll be back pretty quickly. We're just going to disappear here for station ID. Oh Listen yeah, to three guys will be coming quick. El show de las tres comadres. Ahorita regresamos. The three guys rant. 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 If you're ready for the pain, if you want to stick around for hours and feel complete, you're done. We are the three guys rant. Harvey, Mike, and Phil. I already feel dirty. You are dirty. Oh yeah, look at you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're getting some nasty texts about why we're commenting the on bodily functions. Whoa. I don't know what that was. Um, so, again, thank you for listening. This is a Three Guys Rant with Arvin, Mike, and Phil. Why Makes always last? Because you're the big boy, man. If you get in the front, nobody's going to see the other two. I like it. I like it. Okay. So, uh, again, if you want to call in, 855-693-GUYS. Make sure you check us Thank out you. at uh, the three guys com. You can also follow us on Twitter at the three guys rent. And real quick before we get into anything, you know, last segment we we're talking about the Lamborghini Veneno. Uh, the I what? Veneno. We got a couple of pictures. Uh, Four million dollars. Only three of them will be produced, and all three of them have been spoken for. So yeah, no more. So what is so different from that one? It's uh, twenty thirteen. That's it. It's new. The only thing that looks different is the back end. And you can't have it. Eh. Well, he couldn't have any of them. Yeah, I don't so like it. <laughs> it don't matter. <laughs> but there's the pictures. If you're streaming us, you can see the pictures. Beautiful piece of machine. I wouldn't pull it out of my driveway if I could afford it. Uh, I just wanted to uh, comment because there was a text involved. Uh, Goma, I love you. And the reason that I was talking about your mishap during dinner is because your husband is a cheap, is a cheap ass. Bag. And I just wanted to make sure that you get the finer things in life more often. Um, I know when uh, she gets the finer things in life. When they got married, she thought it'd be exotic to marry a Puerto Rican. I think she realizes the truth is that he's just a cheapskate. (laughs) I said I would, but the way my bank account is set up, the thing is, I got a check in in the savings, but all the money is in my savings. (laughs) You know what? She gets the finer things in life. She gets me. Son, you are so broke down and decrepit. It's amazing she's still with you. I was gonna say, I just realized right now why she likes. If you hadn't trapped her and knocked her up to give us that beautiful little angel of a child, she would have long left you. If I hadn't met her, she would still be living in that little shack that she was living (laughs) in, in that little town. uh, It's funny you say that. I informed my wife over the weekend of the same, that uh, she'd be a hood rat had I not found her. I know. That one makes me holler, honey, boo-boo. I'm staying out of this one. (laughs) (laughs) I was afraid of both of our wives. All right. So, the next topic. And I love this article. It was spectacular because I'm curious to see where Arvin comes in on it. Congressional pay versus military pay. Arvin? Military pay should be higher. I know Alan has got a, uh, a, a picture of it. If he can find it, now, I, I, we'll put it up. Let's go, out, let's go out on a limb. It's on wages. I know I usually just spit out whatever whatever comes to mind. But I'm let's assuming. Let's go out on a whim. Let's go out on a whim. How about a limb? How about Steve Wynn? <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> wow! Woo! All right, go ahead. Military pay is obviously, I'm assuming, people like Mikey that have fought for the country. Congressional pay? Are we talking about people in office? No, bro. O- only congressionals. <laughs> only, cons- <laughs> only, only, only constituents. Wow, then that's got to be one big caucus. <laughs> Mikey, can you can you explain to the to the listening public where does congressional pay come from? <laughs> you see, when when the when the little mommy Congress loves daddy Congress, okay. Uh, well, basically, oh. it, it's basically what what I was upset about, and I was reading about it is basically. He, here's I'm gonna give you some numbers. You see, you can kind of see what I'm talking about. The salary for the U.S. president is four hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. Now, once you become president, Cecil was right. That is your salary for life. Okay. 
Uh, the salary of the House or Senate members is $174,000. That's for life. Again. Now, there's certain terms that you have to serve when it comes to Congress. Uh, the Speaker of the House, $223,000 for life. The majority and minority uh, leaders is one hundred ninety-three thousand dollars for me, life. Now, let me let me ask you something. This is once they retire. So no, that's what they make right now when they're in office, right. and when they retire, they continue to get that for life. Does it ever go up because of inflation of living or something? Probably. Uh, but is it retire or is it when their term is up or they're voted out? When they retire, <laughs> retirement for them means when they're gone. That's what I'm saying, though. Yeah. But 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 again, a, a lot of people think retirement is that they got to wait till they're sixty-five. Oh, yeah, no, no, that's not the case. So it's when their term is up or yes, they're voted out. when they leave, yes. Okay. okay. Now, the average salary of a soldier deployed in Afghanistan is $38,000. And the average income for seniors in Social Security is $12,000. So I don't understand how people... Holy... Well, I almost said a bad word. Is that right? Military personnel is on the bottom of this totem pole? On what? Of this map I'm looking for or looking at. Uh, you're talking about pay-wise? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, you have these people that are there that are just basically not doing anything for our country. They claim that they're serving, but they, they go to um, <clears throat> they go to the, to the Congress. They, they become, they feel like they're entitled to a certain lifestyle. They feel like they're entitled to a certain standard and a certain respect, yet our men and women serving the, the country... <laughs> Don't get anything near what they uh, think deserves. A lot of times they get sent overseas with, without the proper equipment. They're there for multiple tours, and these a holes in, in Washington are sitting back, bringing the country to gridlock, whether it's financial or otherwise, and nobody seems to get upset about that. Well, I'm assuming it's because they, um, their thinking is probably, well, if one of them dies, there's another 100,000 behind them that we can send. Right. Yeah. And then with this so funny you're part, expendable. Yeah, no, we we know that. But but the other thing too is that not too long ago, I think it was less than a month ago, they were uh, talking about maybe reducing congressional pay. And Nancy Pelosi, which I'd really liked as a speaker when she was in the, the the speaker of the house, was actually against it, saying that you know it would be demeaning to the office to for them to take a pay cut. You know, because they're you know Congress for who? Because it's not demeaning to me. I no, encourage it. Th that's what I'm talking about. These people work for us. Yet, they are so disconnected from us. I would say uh, that these positions should be not voluntary, but voluntary. You still have to run, get elected, but they should be without pay. It was that way at one time. They, right. I think we should go back to that. You can't. Why? Because the same people who would have to approve it are never going to. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's got to be a way around that. There's not. There's no way. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. Forgive me. Forgive me. Yes, at the next state of the union... A uh, cone of protection is going to have to fall over the president, and the meteor that strikes the building takes everyone else out. So, again, it's cool. <laughs> Good news, everyone. I like it. <clears throat> yeah, that's just wrong. I, I, if you want to serve the people, be for the people, by the people, then you should get paid like the people. But I guess I have a question for Mike. Why do you feel that, you know, when somebody volunteers for the military? Mm hmm. That uh, you know there should be more, and I'm asking only because again I know part of the argument is they get what you know they get free room and board, they get trained in a skill. A lot of them can go to college or move on to other careers. Not for and free. What do you mean not for free? You, you can get the GI Bill, which is basically some some money that comes your way, but um, you're still gonna have to put money out of pocket. But if you're in the military, they've got several careers that they'll train you for free. Careers, yeah, there's careers in the military that you could train for. But a lot of the stuff that you, depending on the branch of the service, a lot of the stuff that you train for there, uh, you can't apply to civilian life. I mean, what? I mean, I tried when I came back being a hitman for the mob, but I, I wasn't Italian. <laughs> he, he, was, he was overqualified. You know? So, you know, this <coughs> different things Italian. like that. But the thing huh? is, <coughs> yeah, you volunteer. But you, I mean, you volunteer to serve in the in the Congress as well. Nobody. But he, of course, uh, by what you're saying, Phil, isn't it the same thing for the president? Doesn't he get free room and board? Yeah. So again, it's the same thing. So why is one so super inflated? Why does the president need a paycheck while he's getting a free house, free meals, free everything? Because one year in, in the White House takes four or five years off your life. 
This isn't something you walk in and do okay, and just but say. He volunteered to do that. Granted, he didn't. He didn't. He, didn't, okay. he wasn't forced to do it. And, and all I'm saying is that if any CEO of a company, one tenth, one hundredth of the size of the United States, gets twenty five million dollars a year, I don't see the four hundred twenty five thousand dollars being excessive. No, it's not excessive. I'm just saying. I think people in the military should definitely get make more money. They normally used to get that three percent automatic uh, cola increase every year, and, and it, some that sometimes that's been uh, frozen. Doesn't happen, you know. Like for this thing with the sequester, the uh, salaries are not gonna they're not gonna be affected, but they're not gonna go up, so they can't get any any kind of raises. Arvin, what's cola? Yeah, yeah Congress. Uh, like Coca Cola. <laughs> <laughs> Something you drink? You said have Coke and the cola before. <laughs> Is that not right? <coughs> Mikey, help him, please. <coughs> That's a cost of living adjustment. Cola? Cola. Man, I hope next time I go to Puerto <laughs> Rico, I get lots and lots of cola. <laughs> you. Okay. So, anyways, that's something that I, I, I wanted to bring up. Because <coughs> it just sucks. All right. Now, the other one I know that you were hot and bothered by was the uh, Voting Rights Act. <coughs> well, I was... Have you guys been following this a little bit? You know, the Supreme Court is, is uh, heard arguments about how they want to uh, basically do away with Section Five of the the Voting Rights Act, which was passed in 1965 by which Congress states? and and signed by uh, Lyndon Johnson as president. And basically, what what that does, let me pull up my notes here. Um, Section Five, what it does is it holds certain states liable when it comes to the way they handle elections, for instance. And t typically this was passed back when states were not allowing um, certain minorities to vote and, and that kind of thing. There was a lot of racism. So Section 5, basically, what it does is protected states from making any changes that, w that was going to disenfranchise any minority voting group. And basically what, what it did was if a state needed to change whether it was a polling place uh, the times that the polls open and close and you're in, in this particular states that are listed here uh, you had to get approval by the Justice Department because you know in the South particularly that doesn't, that doesn't even sound easy to do in the first place <coughs> right but then basically what is happening now is this is going back to the Supreme Court is listening to the statements again to these arguments and they're saying now that section 5 is necessary you know well, you because, think because by their term there is no more racism today yes uh, which is still a quote, bunch of crock right to to quote Anthony Scalia you know what this does is perpetuate racial entitlement perpetuate how do you spell that huh how do you spell that perpetuate <laughs> <laughs> so but you know what I know there's still racism why because I experienced it last week no I walked it I walked into a liquor store and I got followed by the owner of the liquor store. Well, have you looked in the mirror lately? I, I was dressed very nice. I had mm. just come from the strip club. So, and, and then the thing is that the, the Supreme Court, man, they've taken on powers that they they don't have by constitutionally because what they should be arguing, the only thing that they can do is figure out whether this particular uh, section is either constitutional or not. For, for, before we go on break, I just want to make sure that Manny, the owner of the uh, new sponsor, Baker's Bodega, just called in, or actually text. He says he's got to get some cola in Puerto Rico, too. All right. <laughs> Call the Three Guys Rant now. Would you like to comment? Get on the radio. Check out our website at www.thetreeguysrant.com. The Three Guys Rant. We are the three guys every Monday live from 6 to 7 p.m. You can call us at 855-69-THE-THREE-GUYS. <laughs> it's not the three guys. This is why you should turn in because one has Tourette's. The you other really, one's illiterate. You really should listen in. You never know what's going to happen. 855-69-THREE-GUYS. G-U-Y-S and the number three, not the. Faces yeah. for radio, voices for the deaf. Look forward to talking to you. Hey, I'm audio candy. I don't know about what you guys <laughs> Welcome to the Monster Marketing Group, your one-stop shop for all your marketing needs, 
anything you need to make that marketing and advertising campaign stand out. We're your people. Concept, design, production, social media, anything that you can dream up, we're going to make happen for you. And we can do it in a very quick turnaround. Please give us a call at 888-49-MONSTER. Hi, I'm Aaron Michael Sanchez. And I'm Kelly B. Dolan. And we are excited to announce our show live with Aaron Kelly is on Rant Radio Network. What do we talk about on our show, Kelly? We talk about everything from entertainment to business and tech, and we have a few laughs in between. <laughs> That's right. Go check us out on RantRadioNetwork.com. That's RantRadioNetwork.com. Check it out. This segment sponsored by Mucho Macho Michelada. Whenever you got to spice up your beer, Mucho Macho Michelada is for you. Did Only you real men. Did you say Mucho Macho? Mucho Macho, baby, where the real men come to drink. Hey, I don't always drink Michelada, but when I do, I drink Mucho Macho Michelada. <laughs> If only Arvid could be a little more mucho macho. Will it put some hair on my chest? <laughs> no, but the quema entrando y saliendo. <laughs> Streaming live from Los Angeles and worldwide, The Three Guys Rant with Arvin, Mike, and Phil. Check out our website at www.thetreeguysrant.com. The Three Guys Rant starts now. Hey there, laddie. How are you doing? That's one of the messages we just, we just got asked. If anybody here is Irish because of the commercial plane from Ireland. I don't know. if We'll go with it. St. Patrick's is coming. So that's how we're going to justify that. Also, one of the messages that came through is pay the government market price with the same rules and regulations that people live by. So, what the hell does that mean? I don't know. I just read them. If you're the doorknob that sent that, please call in 88869 the three guys. Boy, I just hope that's not a sponsor advertising. <laughs> okay. Can you please defend that statement? Because Arvin's delivering it for you and it makes no sense at all. Read it one more time. It made sense to me. That's all that matters. Read it one more time. Pay the government market price with the same rules and regulations that the people live by. Mikey, help me. I have no clue. Thank maybe you. maybe if you say it in Spanish. Yeah, maybe. Go ahead, Arvin. What you got? No, no sé qué carajo dice. <laughs> <laughs> ¿Qué qué? Yo creo que está loco. What, what? Mm -hmm. So, no, anyways, one of the other topics that I wanted to come out, and it comes back to, um, I know the deficit and everything we talked about at the top of the hour, but this is how, in my opinion, screwed up the system is we're just paying for 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 being idiots basically or, or stupidity or whatever you want to call it but uh for anybody here in los angeles even if you're in california up north i'm sure you know about it we had uh, a big event geez a few months back a few months back called uh carmageddon which was basically equivalent to the mayan scene the end of the world was coming i mean that's how big of a deal it was i don't think it affected anybody here and there's a picture of once they open it but i don't think it affected anybody here because it's such as I don't know what the big deal was. He shut down a freeway for a weekend to do some construction to widen the freeway. And again, it was like the end of the world was coming. Over the weekend, we had the son of Carmageddon, which I don't even think they closed the freeway. I think they closed most lanes except one. And again, people just lose it when stuff like that happens. Um, but again, my, my whole point is that they actually finished a day earlier than they were supposed to. And... I'm going to say money's got to motivate people because the last thing they finished early, I'm, I'm thinking they got a bonus of about a quarter of a million dollars. And from doing further research, in order to entice companies to even be a part of the bidding process, just to bid, my understanding is that whoever had the lowest bid got $8 million just for putting their bid in. That just to me is ridiculous. We got to find a way to be a part of the bidding process. I'll... I'll undercut anybody else that bids without even knowing what I'll, I'll put in a bid for a hundred bucks then you can't do the job you know are, are you really gonna win are you really gonna win <laughs> bidding like that because i'm sure whoever bid the lowest didn't get the job because my understanding is that they got to take three of the ones being considered and then take the average from you that. do understand Here that comes. they're going to take into account if you write a hundred dollars that you're a joke <laughs> They're Wait. still looking for the job to be completed and fulfilled. We can start an army of Julio and, they, and they get they it know. done in 12 hours. They know what it, it, that job is going to cost roughly, so they're looking for real numbers. They're, they're gonna know and number that, two, they're going to know what that job what? It's going to cost it's gonna roughly. Be, it's going to cost $5? Five? It's, it's going to cost roughly 
But the other thing too that you gotta look, look into account. I, I'm not opposed to these people when they take on these these jobs if they finish early and they get a bonus because that means it's in most instances it's costing us less overall. So it's a performance bonus that as but a taxpayer your, I but wouldn't to mind your paying. Point, okay, but to your point, what I'm saying is yeah, I'm okay with the eight million dollar bonus, but but you didn't do nothing for it. It doesn't matter. As for long, your time? You're what I'm saying is that if you don't go over... Yeah, out? but then there should be no overages. Yeah, the problem is when they go over, a lot of these contracts are cost-plus contracts. So basically, even if I go over my budget, you, the government is still going to pay me whatever it costs me to complete the job, plus there's a percentage added on to it. It's the stupidest contract. I mean, of course, it's the government, but it's the stupidest way to, to negotiate contracts ever. So if somebody finishes... Because you're, your, because you're encouraging somebody to take their time? Yes. And overspend? Yes. So again, you know, I was it, it was a pleasant surprise that the 405 opened up a day early. That's twice in a row. I don't know if it's the same company, but I'm assuming they have to be receiving some kind of bonus to finish early. Right. Which is funny. So either way, you're making more money than you should be. What's amazing is that this is it doesn't just happen here at home when we're building roads or bridges. It happens overseas, too. That's what some of the contracts that the Defense Department has negotiated with these contractors are cost cost plus. So Again, the U.S. government. The U.S. government. So when you say overseas, it's still the U.S. government. It's still the U.S. government negotiating the stupid contracts. a bunch of morons here in this country, then, and that's why we're in the deficit that we're in. Yep. Now, we did get clarity on Arvin's text. That's why we should never allow Arvin to speak for anybody. They were saying that it should be equal, equal. And I agree. If you work, I've always said, I don't think any of the government workers should get more than the private sector jobs. Not when you live off of our tax dollars. So on that post, the one that was sent to Arvin, I could not agree more. I don't think you just, you know, you're right. To Mikey's point, they don't deserve the 150000 a year. I say th- the, their pay should be based on the military's pay. You're a first-term congressman. You're a private you get a private pay. But you and know, as you so move does, up. So does that also reflect on police officers, fire department? I don't know if I can put teachers in that category, but. Yeah, but look at what the starting pay for a, a, a policeman is. Most of their money in the old days, uh, you know, because now all the cuts, was overtime. Yeah, I think nowadays starting pay for, I think, the LAPD is close to the $50,000 range. Yeah, I was going to say. Which is not excessive. 48, for what they do. Like that, right. right. So that's what I'm saying. So, you know, the well, so like the tweet that you got, it makes sense because I don't think these guys should get all of this money just to sit up there. And, and forget to sit up there. Did you know that their new congressional calendar just came out and it works out that in this next year, they're going to work a whopping 129 or 26 days. Okay. So they're basically yeah. working like two and a half days out of every week while they're in session. See, here's another one. Funny that our people have some of the best health insurance insurance plans in the country paid by the people, but they are reluctant to offer the same to the people that pay their health insurance. See, but in here's How the, is that for a rant? I like it. No, that was a solid rant because it's the same thing that's going on when you hear all these people crying about, oh, I'm losing my city job. I'm losing my government job. And I've always said, well, I have no what? sympathy. If people weren't doing the stupidity nonsense that they were doing in Bell, what the guy scheme one point. Six million off the top or something? For yeah, so many but that's years? a mere pittance of the total amount of money that gets wasted on what people who went to work. What I've never understood is why is it that you get to work off of our tax dollar? So because you went to work for the city or the county and they have a bigger pool of workers and then they're tied into like CalPERS or some of the others, they can negotiate with the insurance companies so they get all these primo benefits, but yet again, they're still living off of our tax dollars. And to Mikey's point, the military gets crap so that's what I'm saying is that I have no sympathy for any of them all these people like oh you know I went to work for the county and now I'm out oh well that's too bad (laughs) thank you Helen so it's one of those things now if you're an independent business if you're a small business you know if you've got a chain store whatever I understand some of the you know the the frustration when people are talking about the taxes and what they want to fight but you know for these people to just keep saying oh well you know we deserve, we deserve, we deserve. Not if you're living off of our tax dollar. Again, I'm going to say if you have one of those voluntary jobs, it should be voluntary. So, I mean, I don't know. I, I just think the system all in all is screwed up, and I think that's why we're being surpassed by so many different countries now. I think the last time I looked, we used to, we went from, like, number one to, like, 34 behind, like, Costa Rica or something like that. In what sense? In regards to being a superpower. We're, we're nowhere near the top anymore. So, 
Yeah, I agree. It's it's it's. Yeah, but again, a super superpower. You well, we still the, the, we still pretty much the only superpower. The, the, the world. term gets thrown around so damn much that you know it uh, means nothing. Yeah, I, I mean, again, so okay, if we're if we're four, if we're thirty fourth, who is the superpower that that you would deem? I think it was China, if I'm not mistaken. They got more people, but oh, know. they got a lot of people. <laughs> Hell, I think even uh, India was in, was uh, towards the top five of the list. Again, but b- based on what? Yeah, but not not a superpower. I think, I think in, in regards to technology and and I don't know all kinds of stuff. We'll go with that. All right, talking about money. Did you guys see how uh, Miss Delaware Teen USA uh, had to give up her crown because uh, allegedly she was in a porn? Not to me. Yeah. I That's said, a lady. I saw that. <laughs> Which part? The porn or the, uh, the article? No, unfortunately, I haven't seen the porn yet. Um, Can we look that up back there, Mr. Engineer? You know what's funny is they're saying that she was only paid $1,500 for the adult movie. The sad part, uh, Miss, what is it? Melissa Miss, King. Yeah, Melissa King from Miss Delaware. You know, the sad, the sad part is, though, all she did was get videotaped having <coughs> regular vanilla missionary sex. You say it like it's a bad thing. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. What I'm saying is that this this girl, you know, the society that we live in forced her to, you know, she had to surrender her crown. She became, you know, Miss Teen Delaware. Um, so let me get this straight. So go. the one girl that has plain, boring sex, and she is cute, so I'll take some of that. But the transgender that actually made a big old stink about it got to keep hers or his. I don't know. But the transgender didn't have a sex video on the Internet. I'm sure there was pictures of before and after. Um, I don't know what. To what, tell what you. transgender? There's Miss Teen Delaware. Was it Miss Miss Universe? Miss America? Miss? I think it was Miss Universe. Oh no, that one that the Canadian one, right? That entered that pageant. I believe so. Yeah, I know we had no. talked about it in a previous show as well. So, I mean, yeah, she looks a little porny. What's wrong with that? <laughs> I'm, so- <laughs> I'm sorry. She looks a little porny. <laughs> <laughs> Is, is, is that from the same people who brought you carnies? So car, carnies work for carnivals and pornies work for porn? Is that what it is? You know what? We got to trademark that. <laughs> <laughs> we got to trademark what? Uh, porny. Um, there's the transgen. Okay. Uh, so is again, she a porny too? <laughs> she, she's, she, she's a tranny. <laughs> wow. I was simply trying to defend the poor girl saying, you know, okay, so she. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's the before and after of the transgender. But again, it's Canada. Nothing was shown. Look at that. I she's she's full of crabs. Literally, there's crabs crawling on her. <laughs> no, but it's it's um, that wouldn't that wouldn't be a good porny. Yeah, but what do you think? She should have kept her crown, or I thought she quit before the allegations came out. It's kind of like she knew it was coming. So she. Well, I, I think she, again. Crown. So what? There's probably nothing else to do in Delaware. I think they she should have be been approached, and um, the, I'm surprised there isn't more porn stars out of Middle America because there's nothing to do except cows and hump some sheep. It makes <laughs> sense. So, so there could be. You're talking about a different kind of porn. Look at her. She should be on Vivid Video or something, man. Look at that. Look at that forehead. I mean, come on. <laughs> wow. So a big forehead indicates porn. And, and and the giant and the gi- I can show an ADH movie on your forehead. That makes All you I'm going to say is that that makes a hell of a landing spot. <laughs> <laughs> wow, <sighs> interesting. I, okay, um, I would pay five dollars for that. I, I I don't even know where to go with that anymore. <laughs> I, I was trying to defend the girl and say you know I felt again bad she for should, I, I'm defending her I'm all for it I you know you know you know my uh, you know you do have a pretty big forehead yourself. <laughs> <laughs> what is your point? I'm just saying. Just saying. So anyways, you know where I stand. I think if the world had more horrors, it'd be a better place. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I I got nothing. Pornies, if you're out there, call in. I got nothing. Eight five five sixty nine three guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you're streaming us, you're looking at a picture of Christina Ricci, right? Yeah, that's who it is there. Yeah, um, yeah I got nothing. I, I, I don't I'm even know. I'm sorry, I, I saw Christina <laughs> porn. Okay, what do we what do we talk about? Wait, 
Are we about to go on break? <laughs> I thought we were about to go on break. That's why I held off on the next one. Okay, I think we're about to go on break. So in the meantime, why don't we talk about Arvin? You know what? Let's talk about it. Oh, it looks like we're going. Uh, it looks like we're going on break. All right, you listen to a three guys rant. We'll be back after the break. Rantradionetwork.com. Transmitiendo en vivo en Los Angeles y alrededor del mundo. Would you like to comment? Get on the radio. Check out our website at www.thetreeguysrant.com. The Three Guys Rant. This is Sparta! This segment sponsored by Mucho Macho Michelada. Whatever you got to spice up your beer, Mucho Macho Michelada is for you. Did Only you, real men. Did you say Mucho Macho? Mucho Macho, baby, where the real men come to drink. Hey, I don't always drink Michelada, but when I do, I drink Mucho Macho Michelada. <laughs> If only Arvin could be a little more mucho macho. Will it put some hair on my chest? <laughs> no, but te quema entrando y saliendo. Welcome to the Monster Marketing Group, your one-stop shop for all your marketing needs. Anything you need to make that marketing and advertising campaign stand out, we're your people. Concepts, design, production, social media, anything that you can dream up, we're going to make happen for you. And we can do it in a very quick turnaround. Please give us a call at 888-49-MONSTER. Hi, I'm Aaron Michael Sanchez. And I'm Kelly V. Dolan. And we are excited to announce our show live with Aaron and Kelly is on Rant Radio Network. What do we talk about on our show, Kelly? We talk about everything from entertainment to business and tech, and we have a few laughs in between. <laughs> That's right. Go check us out on RantRadioNetwork.com. That's RantRadioNetwork.com. Check it out. This segment has been brought to you by Coco Cafe. It's a cafe latte coconut water with espresso. And I came across this wonderful little drink just recently, and it has to be one of the best things I've ever had. I'm pretty obsessed with cocoa water and espresso, so the thought of it together was a little bit, I'm no, I wasn't sure what I was going to get, but my gosh, let me tell you, it's super tasty. It's made with natural coconut water, a strong shot of espresso, and a splash of reduced fat milk. You can visit them online for more information at drinkcococafe.com. Once again, I want to thank everyone at Coco Cafe for being a sponsor of this radio show. Thanks so much. Streaming live from Los Angeles and worldwide, The Three Guys Rant with Arvin, Mike, and Phil. Check out our website at www.thetreeguysrant.com. The Three Guys Rant starts now. That's terribly sexy. Oh, yes, yeah. I am. <laughs> hey, that was for me. Yeah. Oh, okay. man. So, what I we talk about, a lot of people have been talking about this, and I, I'm sure even Arvin had to have heard something about it um what about that big quitter the pope man the uh racist jew he's not a jew he he, uh, he, he he's not he's not a jew huh you know he's not a jew he was german right yes yeah (laughs) you realize he's not a jew right same thing (laughs) it's like the same thing (laughs) don't they go hand in hand don't they have the same beliefs okay I, i there was something you know what it's it's i mean yeah he's a quitter um it's only happened what four times in six hundred years or something. Two thousand years, my numbers are off. But honestly, I gotta say, since day one, there was just something about him that just rubbed me the wrong way. Uh, being that I'm a Catholic uh, Catholic boy. <laughs> so, uh, is it? I, I, <laughs> were you molested as a little boy? Is that what happened, man? Were you an altar altar boy? I was, I was, I was, <laughs> I so wish that people could hear the stuff that's being said in our, in our headphones. Um, yeah. Go so ahead. this guy quits. Uh, now he's going to be the Pope Emeritus. Is that, which means what? He's going to uh, marry you? Well, I mean, doesn't that just mean like past Pope? Is that what it means? Yeah. All right. So, and then he's still, he's still going to live on, on the Catholic Church's dime. Um, Sounds like the government. He's going to receive a retirement. Sounds like the uh, government. Free room and board. Sounds like the U.S. government. Healthcare. Sounds, well, except for, well, 
Depends what side of the fence you're on right. that one. So now the card- Cardinals are getting together to vote the new one in. There is uh, 17 Cardinals. Only 115 of them are expected to attend the conclave and vote. Well, I had heard that they were supposed to have a pope by today, but obviously they're ahead. But now they're shooting for midweek just because now they want to slow the process down, have some lunches, have some dinners to get to know each other better before they vote because some of them, I mean, they're spread out throughout the world. So it's not, I'm not saying it's impossible, but a lot of them don't know no, each other, don't know mo- a lot about each other. So they want to get to know each other. It's true. They, they, a lot of them do not. I, I, I don't know. I don't know if I have an opinion either way. It's, it's, is, is it going to come to a screeching halt not having a poop for them for another handful of days? No. Well, I mean, it wouldn't. You know, it's it's not gonna do anything to the s- church. And I again, mean, my th- th- there was one time previous uh, where it took three years to elect a pope. Yeah, so I think it's, so. I think we're good. But my personal opinion, I think the uh, that setup there is an even bigger um, <sighs> corruption than the U.S. government. I think they're above the U.S. government with all their BS and just all the nonsense and all the stuff they try to sweep under the rug. And you just talking about this particular religion or religion in general to start off with this one i'd rather go be a buddha than be a catholic is that why you you eat the way you do <laughs> i do <laughs> you i go, you I go. <laughs> you, my brother you're almost enlightening <laughs> you're I, almost there I, I walk around in my robe and just rub my belly all day you, you know they're, they're referred to as buddhist not buddhas buddha's a statue buddhist star of the yeah that's me. I, I should be idolized. Absolutely. <laughs> Haven't you listened to anything I've told you? Wow. So I know that one of the things that they're uh, contemplating is is a pope that takes office has got to be ready to deal with the scandal of uh, all the little boy touching going on. <clears throat> what was amazing is that supposedly there was a report in regards to that that the uh, that was completed and hand delivered to the pope, and they 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 say that he read it, resealed it, and left it for the next Pope to deal with. Because he didn't want to deal with it. So nobody knows what <laughs> Like a good be. Catholic uh, priest should do. Just brush brush it under the, under the carpet. You know, so... so I, uh, does anybody know, has, has Mahoney gone? Because I know that there was like a whole movement of, of telling him that he should... What would be a nice word to put it? Uh, stay home. Yeah, I don't know if he's gone. I know a lot of people are upset about him because he's one of the big ones also. Right. The, uh, right, I know that he had an itinerary to go, but last right. I heard, I don't know if he got on a plane. I don't know, but uh, that is so that that whole thing is all so messed up about it. what was going on with the sex. What but I didn't understand is that if he was hiding, uh, not if, not, not if I'm sorry, but for all the hiding that he did, I don't understand how it's not obstruction of justice. I don't, I don't understand. Again, to that's Arvin's why point. they are self-governed. It is such. No, no. I, I understand. If I ever, if I ever built some kind of large enough organization, I'm gonna model it right after the Catholic Church, because they're self-governing. They're basically their own country. They're their own everything. They don't have to answer to nobody, which to me is just amazing that they can get away with it, and people just flock to them like. Uh, can't think of those little the, the lemmings well, like lemmings. No, 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 no. Again, one of the things you're talking about th- was that. That, that they're surprised um, most of their growth right now is coming from Africa because out they're they're losing numbers over here out of desperation or out of what no I think because they don't know any better out of conversion yeah they're, they're converting people out left and right because you know those people the majority of them over there are not connected to the internet they're not connected to to the news they don't know what's going on in the church so they won't know what's going on until um until, there's been, a molest- getting, until yeah, there's been a molestation. Yeah, until the kids are getting molested. And I'm the sad thing is that it could go on for years. I, I just got a message. Uh, Mel Gibson should be the next pope. <laughs> <laughs> pope. There he is. Pope Mel the Passionate Gibson. There you go. Um, you know what? He couldn't He couldn't be any worse than what we've had recently. Well, you know, but the thing is where the I think the church as a whole, you know, forget what I believe about Catholicism, but. It's an institution. It's such an enormous absolutely if you machine. Believe, if you believe in Catholicism, you should be institutionalized. Catholicism. Yep. 
Buddha is the way to go. <laughs> okay, so then do me a favor. Mike and I will sit here quietly. Could you please enlighten us in the way of the Buddhist? Rub some bellies, eat some bacon, roll it up and spam. I'm not sure Buddhist eat any <laughs> form of meat. This Buddha does. <laughs> <laughs> Let alone spam wrapped bacon <laughs> or bacon wrapped spam. Um, yeah, yeah, no, but I mean, the, the church is, you know. I, I'm I'm just really just holding back because man, if I see no no no, I want to hear it. Man. Come on, let's hear it. No, nah. give me your opinion. There uh, are you Catholic? It's, nope. Are you sending Max to uh, church on Sunday? Nope. Why not? I plead the fifth. Because man, I don't want to get molested. He's a good looking little boy. <laughs> Unlike the father, I see. Hey, don't matter. <laughs> but nobody's touching that boy. So, no, Max is not going to school. I mean, to Catholic uh, mass. I don't care what his mother says. But yeah, I think Phil's absolutely right. It, it is, uh, what was your words? Uh, a machine. It is a machine. Absolutely. And and uh, what they've gotten away with actually doing it is, is that it's a cash-making machine before religion. In my opinion, it's more about the dollar than the actual religion at the end of, of the day. Is. But nobody, nobody says that. Nobody addresses it. It just, again, gets swept under the rug. What I don't understand is why mo most religions or all the religions get a tax exempt status when elections come around and, and some of these guys are preaching or talking to their congregations about who to vote for and, you know, which way they, sh they should throw their money at when it comes to elections. I don't know. If, if for anybody streaming, make sure to check out the three guys com. Click on the uh, live or view live button and you can see what we see here in studio. That picture up on the screen looks like... Um, the Pope with uh, a bunch of molesters behind him. It looks like a cult. It looks like something out of uh, it angels, looks like he, angels and Demons. He was giving awards. He's showing him my O face. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. You know what I'm talking about. Oh. <laughs> That's exactly what that looks like. Yep. All right. I wonder how many, I wonder how many listeners we've offended today. Well, I got... Uh, yeah. You know what? It's... it's <sighs> All right, let's talk about the worm and North Korea. <laughs> the numbers are actually going <laughs> up of what? Hate mail? Marvin, your thoughts on my worm going up? The worm in North Korea. The only worm I care about is in the bottom of my tequila <laughs> bottle. <laughs> Mikey? You know, I don't know what the hell he was going over there for. Um, I guess, shows you how much I followed it, but I guess it was some sort of... Uh, uh, sports movie, basketball movie. I know some of the Harlem Globetrotters were with him. Uh, I'm not sure if it was for ESPN. No, actually, who the I hell think is a worm? It was for Spike there. TV. Dennis Rodman. Oh, the uh, political, political. Um, yeah, I don't know what the hell, but apparently, <laughs> <laughs> apparently, apparently, he's better at it than most of our politicians because they they brought him in with open arms. I saw him having. I think he was having drinks with them and whatnot. So with who, sir? With her. With uh, Kim Lee Jr. and uh, <laughs> the cousin, <laughs> Chung Chi. So, yeah, he went over there to film a sports documentary. I think it was for Spike TV. Now, I'm going to say, I don't know if that had anything to do with the new Celebrity Apprentice, if it was whatever, but uh, the show started last night. Is, is he, is he it. in it? He's in it again. Yeah. But I, I don't know. Maybe the Donald sent him over there for the publicity. But it was one of those things. I mean... He's a, he's a private citizen. I, he went over there. He was doing what he said he wanted to do. He was filming a special for Spike TV. Uh, apparently, this nut job over there is a big basketball fan. So he was at the event, and you know, I mean, he's meeting a, an NBA superstar. And what what is it that they're doing for Spike TV? Have they disclosed that? It was besides a, filming. It was a sports type documentary if only you had said that two times prior. i know so i mean I, is, I, you know, know. Just, I really wish did you i say it in, 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 what what in <laughs> sign language <laughs> <laughs> it was about basketball so <clears throat> you know that the fcc um, does not allow those kind of hand gestures so basically you know he was over there he claims that he uh, apparently the report was saying that he uh he told <laughs> chong ching to use your name, I said Kim Lee Jr. and Chung Chin. That they would be uh, friends for life, and he, when he came back, he was interviewed, and he said, "Look, I had nothing personal against the guy. He didn't do anything <coughs> to me. I don't agree with his policies, but I was there doing this thing, and we were well well received. So I got nothing against him. I gotta say, it is impressive what a lunatic 
can there do when our corrupt politicians cannot. Look at him. He's right there enjoying the basketball game with... Uh, but you have to understand uh, something. Hey, my AIDS is acting up. <laughs> this, this wasn't about politicians. That's what I'm saying. It's it's maybe we need to get the... the I don't even know what the hell words we can use on radio anymore. The um, the boneheads that are running the country out and get in regular people that actually have a sense of what's going on. Because well, they don't. Back. We'll explore that a little further. You listen to the Three Guys Rant on Rant Radio Network. Stick around. Transmitiendo en vivo en Los Angeles y alrededor del mundo. Would you like to comment? Get on the radio. Check out our website at www.thetreeguysrant.com. The Three Guys Rant. I am in no mood. We are the Three Guys every Monday live from 6 to 7 p.m. You can call us at 855-69-THE-THREE-GUYS. <laughs> it's not the three guys. This is why you should turn in because one has Tourette's. The you other really, one's illiterate. You really should listen in. You never know what's going to happen. 855-69-3-GUYS. G-U-Y-S and the number three. Not the. Faces yeah. for radio, voices for the deaf. Look forward to talking to you. Hey, I'm audio candy. I don't know about what you guys <laughs> Experts know that for pastry, Baker's Bodega has it all. Exclusive brands like Westco Bankmark, Satin Ice, and Pastry Pride. One-on-one -on -one day seminars for cake decorating and gelatin art. So for our service, wide range of ingredients and supplies, and for the low prices, Baker's Bodega has it all. But you don't need to be an expert. Baker's Bodega, 7869 Paramount Boulevard in Pico Rivera. Come, we're waiting for you. Hi, I'm Aaron Michael Sanchez. And I'm Kelly V. Dolan. And we are excited to announce our show live with Aaron and Kelly is on Rant Radio Network. What do we talk about on our show, Kelly? We talk about everything from entertainment to business and tech, and we have a few laughs in between. <laughs> That's right. Go check us out on RantRadioNetwork.com. That's RantRadioNetwork.com. Check it out. Welcome to the Monster Marketing Group, your one-stop shop for all your marketing needs. Anything you need to make that marketing and advertising campaign stand out, we're your people. Concepts, design, production, social media, anything that you can dream up, we're going to make happen for you. And we can do it in a very quick turnaround. Please give us a call at 888-49-MONSTER. Streaming live from Los Angeles and worldwide, The Three Guys Rant with Arvin, Mike, and Phil. Hot topics and headlines. Love, doctors. Politics. Arvin's Corner. The Three Guys Rant starts now. The Three Guys Rant. 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 All right, we're back for the final segment. We left off where Arvin was educating us on his thoughts behind the worm visiting Kim Jong-il. I was close enough. <laughs> what is the problem? You know, what's funny is you commented that they should send regular people, and I'm not sure that's what it is. I think it's more of, you know, it's this guy. Non, it's non-confrontational is what it is. Well, well no, yeah, it's, that's part of it. But I think, you know, the guy took over. You know, his grandfather was a dictator. His dad was a Laravian lunatic. Hey, that was a good movie. This guy, you know, is 28. He's trying to run the country. He can't appear weak. He's got to save face. Um, you know, I think it's interesting that he sent back a message, ask your president to call me. And Dennis Rahman said that the president should call him. So the president should. Who said he should? Dennis. Oh. He was in it. He said the president should call the guy. But, you know, I was surprised that Stefan Abel kept push or pressuring him, asking him, you know, how do you feel about his human rights issues and some of the other Right. That's the part I didn't get. I mean, he's not a politician, man. He's a, it's a basketball player. Right. A crazy one at that. So why are you going to ask him for le legitimate questions to serious, uh, legitimate answers? Because they're both crazy. To serious questions, you know. So Fair enough. <coughs> All right. Mikey over here is trying to hold my hand. Arvin, this one's for you. 501 days in space with your spouse. <laughs> with your spouse? With your spouse. Right. I th I, <coughs> did I, 100, 501 days with your spouse? Uh. NASA's looking for a married couple who can go up in a uh, ship on a uh, expedition trip to Mars. Is there going to be cameras? Uh, 
<laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's cameras. Uh, then I'm out. Because <laughs> 51 days into that sh- into that uh, trip, somebody's going to know. That's way too many days with, with your spouse. Uh, you know, uh, Mikey? What, is that is that going to be like uh, around the space station or is that interstellar travel? What What is it? Are no. Are just going to float around? Um, no. That's that's not interspace. Yeah, interspace travel, if you will. Days in an RV-sized capsule on your way to Mars. On its way to Mars. <laughs> okay. So the question is, could you handle it? So they're going to leave you on Mars. I don't. So I don't know how. I don't know whether it's with the spouse or anybody else. I mean, could could you handle it? Could, could a human being handle that kind of travel? I think that's more of the question. No, I think I, I think they can find people that Did can it, handle didn't travel. Didn't you see the Odyssey? They were in that thing for years. Yeah, but they're saying um, it's a huge endeavor, man. Try to get somebody there and back. And they, they're talking about there's a point. I can't remember the distance. At, at some point, like you know, we, we've done. We obviously been in our orbit. We have been to the moon. Uh, some of you believe that we haven't. Uh, but people, there's something about even when you're in space, being able to look back and see the Earth right there. You you have a reference point of where where home is, where you need to get to if something should go so wrong. So you're saying that if you go to Mars, you'll no longer be able to see <coughs> Earth. Yeah, there's a point. I can't remember the distance at which you look back. You're not going to see Earth the way we see it. It's so going to be like far, far in, in is there the is there any deep sleep involved? I mean, are you awake for all 500? Um, I'm sure, sure you sleep for 501 minutes. No, no, no. But I mean, to where like they put you to sleep for you know three months at a no, time. No, you're thinking about suspended animation, and you wake up and you're refreshed, and you're in Mars already. Look, no. you can see Mars. What are you talking about? Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know, man. What what I can't figure out, and I'm trying to look at the article to see if... Um, five minutes, I think that's back and forth. No, I'm sorry. That's one way. So, so a one thousand way. days. A thousand yeah. and two days. Yeah, so... With no issues. Yeah, that's too long. A little wow. over, a little bit over three years. In an RV size thing, so you're literally on top of each other, and if you don't like the person, no way. Mm-hmm. You're talking about all the round trip. Yeah. Okay. Plus, however long you're gonna be over there, who knows? You're gonna be gone for a long time. Mm. Yeah, I don't think so. I'm out. <laughs> yeah, Mikey, I, can well, you and, can you and the missus go on that trip? Oh, absolutely. I would love to go with her. For what about what, what about with the son? What about with the kid? No, I think we need to leave him behind just just for his sake. <laughs> <laughs> for, for his sake. We're only gonna be gone oh three years. No. <laughs> um, well, I don't know. Well, maybe maybe uh, you like spending your weekends, you know, eating Chinese takeout in front of a glowing fireplace. How does that sound? Really, like, you're gonna run with that like, one? Like I'm gonna bad, run. You're, you're gonna run with bad, that one bad because story. because that story you just told bombed like there's no tomorrow. So let's move on. Apparently, that is a thing to do. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, that's the thing. In to Pennsylvania, do. no, no. The reason I bring it up is because a gentleman, a robber, thief, whatever you want. To, oh, I don't. He didn't even do nothing. It's a funny thing. A guy broke into a house, ate Chinese takeout, put on the fireplace, and basically hung out for three days and then left. So cops are still baffled and confused at who the hell it is. They're still looking for him. Is it cold in Pennsylvania? Is is that why you'd want to break into a house and sit in front of the... Phil? <laughs> I don't know. Mr. Well, Travel? Well, uh, this is what I don't understand. Shut okay. up! This guy apparently broke in, you said, right. hung out, ordered takeout, and didn't steal anything. No, no, no. Absolutely not. He just... he had a. So he why had... are they looking for him? Sure, it wasn't the owner's brother, or I, I don't know. They're it's his just son he, or he needed a pleasant way to spend some alone time. Apparently, he needed some R and R. I don't know, but I, why he chose that house? But yeah, he broke into somebody and started a fireplace. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> so, all right. I so, don't know. The other thing. Right, go go ahead. ahead. No, here's the thing. It's, it's we'll talk about it. Call my. She was a little girl 
Let me see if Alan can pull up the picture. Look at that uh, little girl in the red. Uh, anybody can see her? Today, Junior. Today. Well, it turns out she cannot use the girl's bathroom at school. So she pees standing up? Yes. She's got a hell of an advantage. That is a little boy. Uh, ever since he was a toddler, he believed he he acted like if he was a girl he's always wanted to wear girls clothes and he identifies himself as a little girl yes and then um <laughs> you know that if you answer somebody's question speaking into your headphones the people listening have no idea what the hell you're answering okay, well yes he's a, he's a little boy um so they're saying that even when he was a toddler he would tell his mom to take him to the doctor to get fixed and he would be depressed when they were trying to raise him as a boy so finally the parents said you know what we gotta do what's right for her sex change no, no, and she no but she's being raised as a little girl but now there's a battle with school because she won't go into the boys bathroom even though Adam, anato anatomically it's a boy he wants to go to the girls bathroom one question if that was your kid what would you do I don't know so the school has tried to propose, okay, so he can come to the office and use the office bathroom or go into the nurse's bathroom, but the parents are not uh, happy with that because they're saying that that may traumatize Well, him. let me ask you this. What do the parents of the other kids say? I don't think they've interviewed. It. According because to the report, they haven't talked to anybody I else. I got to say, at that age, there is no... Right, but they're, they're talking about, uh, they're worried about as, as he keeps growing, he's going to develop differently. Physically, not mentally. Right, so right. But that's what I'm saying. At this age, I don't think there's any any bad anything behind that, it. That I is a, a messed up situation to be in as a parent. Uh, what do you do? You know. I mean, just prepare for uh, Maury Povich and Jerry Springer. That's a, my recommendation. So, and then it, he's got a, a legitimate psychiatric disorder that's been like it's never happened before, and not like you know obviously little kids from, from almost birth was acting like that so so i'm willing to bet sad, that huh? by the age of 18 that little boy change operation <clears throat> school districts in many states have enacted policies that allow transgender students to use the identity so but apparently here so peace that in well Again, at that age, I don't think there's any. There's any. Why are you laughing? <laughs> I'm sure. It, even if he went into the little boy pee standing up, I, he, he. I'm sorry. I just got to comment that you're trying to give an impassioned plea for this I know. poor child, and and all our all our Vic and Kraft from the whole story is okay. She can pee standing. Up. I I tell Again, you, let that little kid go in the girls' bathroom. That's what I'm saying. If don't the kid wants to go in there. The kid wants to go in there. Let the kid pee in the girl's bathroom. All right. Um, good for the little girl. We've only got a couple of minutes. Mikey, I was looking for your comments on uh, your Lakers <laughs> suck. Um, and how excited hey, we are is the 500, whole world? Man. We're at 500, man. We're at 500, finally. How excited are you that they are we're, we're only three, two or three games out of uh, the playoffs right out of now. Playoff contention. What are That's you, right. number nine in the West? Yeah. And the Clippers are number three? I believe so. I'm, yeah. uh, I'm just saying. That'd be sweet if we squeak into the playoffs and we play the Clips. That would whoa. be awesome. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That, would, that be would be awesome. I I, I agree with you. Once um, and for all, we can determine who, whose team that's it, it's in, uh, who owns the city of L.A. as a team. The Laker era is over. I don't know, though. Why would you say once and for all? I mean, it's Laker town. It's just. Yeah, but the Clippers would come up, man. The, the Clippers have earned a spot up there, man. You I think so? I, yeah, I'm not sure it's, it's just a, a Laker town anymore. So, quick note, is uh, Jay Leno too old for TV? I don't know. He's too old for TV. I know he's ugly as hell. All right. Let's keep going on. It's a caballo. I just bring it up because now there's controversy that that the uh, Jay Leno era might be over and it's time to bring in a younger person okay, to compete all, with Jimmy Kimmel. It's not controversy. Who it's said it's a rumor. You know what? When stuff you, isn't... You, when you TMZ just, reports on something, it's official. 
Because that is the pillar of truth. Oh. Is that why I've seen people taking to the streets and they were protesting? Absolutely. So anyways, uh, we're wrapping up the show. Just want to thank uh, MSNBC News Radio, KCAA 1050 for picking us up. Make sure to tune in on Thursday for another Trash live talk. show. Uh, 5 to 6 Pacific Standard Time. Mike Trash from Trash Talk Radio. Indy 104. Uh, Baker's Bodega for being our newest sponsor. DM Narc Radio out of New England. Tune in Thursday from 5 to 6. Pacific Standard Time. Arvin ran out of time. And it's only one hour. Oh. Yo le voy a cambiar de estación. El show de las tres comadres. Ahorita regresamos.